What is up, coolest? Welcome to another Barça Live right here on Barça One. A big welcome to all of you watching us through YouTube as well. And well, after what has been an absolutely thrilling week, the focus now shifts back on La Liga EA Sports. We've got match day 31 coming up, and the team Chavis men have traveled all the way down south to Cadiz to play in the Nuevo Mirandilla against. Manuel Pellegrino's side. Mixed results over in the past few seasons. We're hoping though, of course, that this team can continue to pick up points and threes and set up a interesting Clásico. That is on the horizon though, that is for next week. Let's keep the focus on Cadiz. And in fact, let's connect with our main man over in the city down south, Mark Brau. How are things over there? And uh, I think you already know the starting 11, don't you? Hi Diego, good evening from Cadiz. Incredible day, spring day here in the, the south of Spain. It's an incredible what we had lived during all the day and it's a pity that Real Madrid won in uh, Mallorca. Only a few minutes to start this Cadiz Barça. But Barça has to focus in tonight's game. We will have time to think in this Barça Paris Saint-Germain game next Tuesday in Estadio Olympic Luis Companys. We have to focus in the league, you have to win today and we have the lineup. A lot of changes in lineup. All three players repeating since the last game against Paris Saint Germain. Ter Stegen, Falco Barsi, and Sergio Roberto. Let's take a look to the lineup for tonight's game against Cadiz with Marc Andre Ter Stegen as a goalkeeper. Four defenders with the great news because we had Marcos Alonso as a left back. After five months, Marcos Alonso is returning to the lineup with Hector Ford, the Masia player, in the position of right back. In the middle of the defense, as a centre backs, Paco Barsi and Andreas Christensen. As a holding midfielder today, Uriel Romeu with our captain Sergio Roberto and Fermin Lopez. And as a forwards in the attack part, Joe Felix Omenino. As a left wing, in the other position, we will have the shark, Ferran Torres, as a red wing. And our striker today, Vita Roque, Tigrino. Remember that today, Gabi and Balder are injured, that Xavi is suspended, will not be in the bench the same as Robert Lewandowski, Inigo Martinez, and Joe Cancelo. Excellent stuff, Mark. As always, we're going to connect with you a little bit later again. But for now, let me introduce today's panel. A lot of new faces, mine included for that. Uh, I'm stepping in for Robert von Eckhout, but fear not. He will be back, of course, as of Tuesday to go over that second leg of the Champions League quarterfinals. But joining me today, we've got, first of all, Pablo Wolves, the new kid on the block. Yeah. Passing to be here. He's hit the ground running, though. <laughs> He's hit the ground running. We're absolutely uh, thrilled to have him. Pablo, welcome here tonight. Are you making your debut here on Barca Live? I'm not entirely sure. My full debut, yeah. Full I've come debut. on for a few post-match things here and there, but this is going to be my full debut. Uh -huh. Full game, La Liga, Cadiz yes. away from home. Buzzing for it. Been a good few weeks. I think the Barca fans know international break sort of got in the way a little bit, but results are still going strong. Feelings are really good, I think, around the team at the moment. Fan base, Definitely. coaches, players. We're feeling good, but of course, you know, strong rotations today. Yeah. Massive week coming up after this, I'm sure everyone's thinking about, but we've got to take care of this one against Cadiz first. Yes, yes. We're going to get into all the nitty gritty. I said new face. Pablo, you're uh, somewhat of a new face. Not entirely. You, of course, already know uh, Pablo from his uh, participations, collaborations with Barca Live, but he's now here in the flesh and with us 24-7. And speaking of new faces... On to our next guest, Jamie Coles. Not really a new face, Jamie. It's the old face coming back to the new plateau. Jamie Coles is back in the house. Back in the house. <laughs> uh, long time watchers of Barca Live may be a little bit worried, Diego, because uh, <laughs> yes. I don't have the best record here on this couch. Oh, that's true. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yes, what was your record? I, I, I don't remember. In, uh, it's, been, it's been a while, but uh, I was known for a good while around the place as the Jinx. <laughs> um, yeah. But, but hey, here I am today. Let's uh, let's see if we can let's see if we can get result, shall we? This does, afternoon. Does knocking on wood kind of cancel out that jinx, or I'll take anything in the minute, Diego. <laughs> <I like. laughs> well, listen. If you want to knock on wood, you knock on. You, uh, you do what you got to do. I think we're going to be knocking on wood. I don't know, but uh, I, I also think that that jinx is a thing from the past, Jamie. Ah. It's a revamped studio. It's a revamped Barca Life uh, uh, plateau. Things are looking spick and span, and I mean, the momentum of this team, it's just, it almost feel like nothing can go wrong. So I think you're good. I think you're good. Diego, um, 
like you, no way of bigging it up to make things go <laughs> as wrong as possible. As, like, I'm gonna touch wood with Dutch two wood. hands. Touch wood. Uh, Thanks, Bob. Boys, <laughs> let's let's. Uh, we just heard from Mark without giving us the starting eleven. Why don't we? Um, in fact, uh, go back to Mark Brau because I think he spoke to to Oscar Hernandez. Mark, let's connect back with you once again. Only a few minutes to start this game uh, between Cadiz and Barça. We are with Oscar Hernandez, assistant coach of Xavi Hernandez. ¿Qué tal, Oscar? ¿Cómo estás? Buenas tardes. Hola, buenas tardes. ¿Qué tal? Bé, veient l'11, es eh, obvi que heu decidit fer moltes rotacions. M'imagino que el fet de tenir el partit contra el Paris Saint-Germain tan proper i també que teniu a molta plantilla disponible, per fi, us porta a prendre aquesta decisió. ¿Qué busqueu? Sí, eh, bueno, és un partit que necessitem eh, entrar bé el partit, necessitem cames fresques. L'altre dia és un partit molt, molt exigent desde dos puntos de vista, pero desde el punto de vista físico muy, muy exigente, por tanto necesitamos entrar en el partido y creemos que los jugadores que entran nos dan una buena primera parte. Davant un rival que está tanca tan como el Cádiz, futbolistas que aportan camas frescas, como por ser el caso de Víctor Roque, que ahora aporta unos cuantos partidos sin entrar, Ferran, ¿os, os puede ayudar? ¿Pueden tener la clau del partido de hoy a un Cádiz que no se les parece muy defensivo? Bueno, hay un Cádiz que tiene bastantes registros amb el nuevo entrenador, pero sí que es verdad que el Víctor en l'espai es un jugador muy, muy potent y el Ferran también es un jugador que l'espai va muy bien. A partir de aquí, no te perdonas, perdo, jugar camp contrari, evitar contraataques, eh, es el que volem. Yo creo que con este equipo que, tra que traiem lo conseguiremos. We'll do the last question in English. Uh, Oscar, if you can explain what kind of game do you expect for today? A very defensive Cádiz, uh, you make a lot of changes in the lineup. what kind of game do you expect? Oh, they play long, usually they play long and they are uh, ready to receive the second ball and after that they start playing, no? but uh, what you have to do is to recover the ball and to play in the in the opposite field no? and to avoid uh, contra-attack. The rest of the fans will be, will be key today and uh, hopefully we can, we can win. Muchas gracias, Oscar. Uh, gracias por otras. Muy bien. The words by Oscar Hernández. Remember that Chávez is still suspended, so Oscar Hernández will be in the bench as a main coach today. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Mark, for that. Great to hear from uh, Oscar Hernández indeed. Uh, boys, Xavi will be watching it from up in the stands. It will be Oscar Hernandez in the dugout. And he's going to face a Cadiz side that, of course, are fighting for points. Uh, Cadiz currently sitting in the rele relegation zone, 18th. Uh, three points, if I'm not mistaken, clear from trying to leapfrog uh, their way out of it. So this is going to be a big game for them. Let's go over the starting 11 for the home side. Uh, it's uh, Ledesma in goal, of course. They've got a back line made of Carcelén, Chust, Usu, and Hernández. In the middle, it is Navarro, Ruben Alcaraz, Alex, and Ruben Sobrino. Chris Ramos and uh, Juanmi, a familiar foe in this case uh, for Fubu Club Barcelona, will make up the starting 11 for the home side. Pablo, what do you say? Are your feelings about uh, this uh, starting 11 for Gadi? Yeah, it's a massive game for Cadiz, make yeah. no mistake about that. I think we've seen some images before the game of their fans, you know, welcoming the players to the stadium. This is a huge game for Cadiz, make no mistake about it. They had sort of a, a bit of a rut this season where, let's be honest, I think everyone thought Cadiz would probably be going down really in La Liga. Yeah. They didn't win a game from September the 1st to March the 9th. Yeah. I think when you have that sort of run, you can end up, you know, getting relegated to the Segunda. But to be fair, they've revived it now in the last few games. They've had a few big wins against Atleti at home too. And they come into this game against Barca, rotated Barca, who they'll be hoping have their mind on the Champions League. And they'll be trying to get the biggest result they can of the season. There's no, there's no doubt about that. They're only three points off centre. They know that all of a sudden their season is alive. And you look at the lineup, some players there who we've played against in La Liga. Season upon season, I'm looking at the midfield duo of Alcaraz and Alex Fernandez. Very experienced heads in there. And the same goes for Sobrino and Juanmi as well in the attack. So there's big names in that lineup for Cali who can certainly make an impact, like I said, experienced La Liga players. So, you know, this is going to be a tough game for Barca. There's, there's, there's no doubt about that to me. Yeah, yeah, they've got, uh, I mean, the main man out for them is uh, Kumane. Of course, uh, Maxi Gomez is also still injured. The, uh, well, once prolific goal scorer in La Liga, we should say, uh, is out of action for the home side. W would you say, Jamie, that Cadiz has been a side that has been punching above their weights uh, since they made it to the Spanish top flight? I, I, I suppose you could say that. I mean, they're, you know, they're fighting at, at probably the end of the table that you'd imagine them to be fighting at, but they're putting up a fight, like you said. You know, they're, they're bringing some, some mm. good results. They're playing hard. And, you know, we will look at the... At, the platform formerly known as Twitter earlier, the fans are out in force. Like, they yeah. really will be the 12th man out there today. Um, Barca's Xavi Hernandez is, is going to be watching from up in the stands. Not to confuse him with the uh, Cadiz left-back, Javi Hernandez. Yes. I'm, I'm worried that he might, like, start saying, like, Victor Rocky, pull back and stuff, and they'll, and they'll listen. It's, uh, it's... <laughs> <laughs> Jamie. Sorry. I... 
<laughs> we're gonna keep moving on. We're gonna keep moving on. In fact, uh, why don't we ask the audience as well? Of course, all of you watching us through YouTube, we want to hear from you. We want to hear from uh, your uh, participation, your thoughts as well on this match. And we're gonna ask you as well who you think the three key players will be for Barça in this match. You can see it on your screens there. The three key players that we have sought out: Fermín López, Víctor Roque, making his start, and as well Ferran. Torres, boys, key players of those three, or another one if you mm. if you want. No, I'm going to go for one of those. I'm, you know, I'm going to go for. I'm going to go for Ferran Torres because mm -hmm. I know he's been out for, with an injury, but I do think that this is the sort of game that Barca are probably going to be looking for someone in that front three to step up and maybe take it by the scruff of the neck. I think it could be Ferran. He scored a lot of goals for Barca this season. I know he's had a lot of impact off the bench, but he gets a good chance starting tonight. He also gets a chance, we think, on the right-hand side, which is a different sort of position and area that he's actually been playing a lot of the season for Barca. Often comes on a left wing or starts a left wing or replaces Lewandowski down the middle. Starting down the right-hand side, that's where he sort of was like born at Valencia in La Liga. I know it's more like a 4-4-2, but I'm intrigued to see him on the right-hand side today. So I'm going to go for Ferran because I think he'll be looking at it and thinking, I can be the talisman today in that mm. front three. And that's what I'm going to go for him. El Tiburón. Pablo's going for El Tiburón. Uh, we see in the chat there, Fermín López, Víctor Roque. A lot of fans happy to see Víctor Roque uh, making his uh, start in the starting 11. Jamie, of those three? Uh, I'm probably going to go with Ferran or Víctor Roque. Mm -hmm. um, Similar kind of motivations, yeah. and I wish you'd ask me first. Because, <laughs> <laughs> but I think, you know, I remember that early on in the season, this whole like Tiburon thing that he had going on around him, like it was cool. He had a point to prove, and I think, like you say, he's returning yeah. from injury again with the same point to prove. He's got an opportunity tonight, and I think he'll do it. Victor Rocky did the same. There was so much hype and anticipation when he was signed. You know, I went to the, the welcome press conference there, and, and it was packed out with, mm. with press, and, and fans were just like desperate to hear from him. Mm. And it's been kind of a quiet season since since Christmas, you know. It's it's yeah. So I think this could be the stretch of the season now where he gets this chance to shine, uh -huh. and I think he's really going to go out in full force, wanting to do that. All right. Why don't we uh, at this point connect one more time with our pitch side reporter Mark Brau? Mark, what have you got in store for us? How's the atmosphere over there, by the way, Mark? I, I, I know it's a, a party-like atmosphere in Cadiz today. They were selling churros con chocolate outside. It's like, it, it, it's a party over there. Well, it's a party always when Barca play the game uh, around all the world. It's like a party, not as all in Paris. Uh, they didn't welcome us a lot, yes. but it's like uh, incredible atmosphere here. We have to explain that Cadiz uh, today uh, is playing with the life. It's incredible also the, the atmosphere. Uh, all the tickets has been sold. Uh, so has been sold. So the atmosphere has to be a, a little bit difficult. Uh, I, I mean, uh, I didn't know if there are churros and chocolate outside. Uh, they didn't offer to me, and I'm a little bit hungry for tonight's game. But uh, of course, it's an incredible atmosphere here, and they. Uh, they also explained that uh, with all the changes that Barca is making in the lineup, uh, due to Barca thinking about the game against Paris Saint-Germain, maybe Cadiz has more options to win uh, to Barca. Remember that two seasons ago, uh, Cadiz uh, was one of the teams who beat Barca twice. So they tried to recover this kind of feelings that they had two years ago. So maybe today it can be it can be different. Excellent, Mark. And uh, I, I know that you have uh, something prepared for us, if I'm uh, not mistaken, a, a little quiz. Yeah, I have the quiz for, for you. Remember that uh, you can play with me, Diego, Pablo, and, uh, and Jamie. Uh, uh, I have to say uh, hello, Jamie. A lot of time without seeing you. I, yeah. I hope you get to see me uh, also uh, <laughs> somebody to, to stay with us with another win. So let's go with the quiz. I have uh, a lot of questions. Remember that I like to play with you also, and I have also some stats. The first question I have for you, it's, uh, you know, I don't know if you know, if Pele, Rino and Xavi played together at Barca. So this is my question for you. So how many of these seasons did Xavi and Pele, Rino play together at Barca? Nil, zero, one or two? Jamie, Pablo, Diego, let's play. And also all the fans who is uh, with us, who are with us in YouTube. 
That's a good one, yeah. I'm curious to see if uh, the people in the chat will know the answer. I, I, I do remember it was during the Louis van Gaal era. It was the late 90s. Um, they so coincided. It's more than zero, is what you're saying, Diego. Is it it? Is, well, it is more than zero. It is more than zero, indeed, indeed. So there's a 50 50 chance here, boys. Um, let's first? see what the chat is saying. Oh, Look, you're going to do it again to me. I'll I'm, go seeing, first time. I'm seeing one, I'm seeing some twos. Yeah, there's, there's, well, it's like I said, it's a 50 50 there. So there's one of those is the correct mixed, answer. Mi Pablo? Mi mixed bag in the chat. Yeah. No, I'll let Jamie go first. Though. Okay. On, I, I, <laughs> I'm going to go with, let's see who's in the chat. I, I saw Bold Bozo said one. I'm going to go with Bold Bozo in the chat. Okay. Yeah, I think it's just the one season. One season, Pablo? I'm also going to go one. All right, well, Pablo and I are like a line today. Well, just, just, just this is a good place. tandem here. So Mark, both of the, <laughs> both Mark and the, or Mark, I'm saying Jamie and Pablo are choosing one. I'm also going to go for one. The answer is one. They ah, played one. one season together. It was in 1998, 1999, second season with Luis Van Gaal as our head coach. The first uh, season with Xavi playing, remember that goal uh, in Valladolid a lot of time ago. Pellegrino and uh, Xavi played together that season. Uh, will, uh, that Barca won the league, won only one title, but was the league today they would face in the bench. Let's go with the second one. Who scored? The last goal against Cadiz. Remember that game a long time ago was in August, in summer. Some players like Joe Felix and Joe Cancelo wasn't playing at Barca then. So Fermin, Lamin Jamal or Ferran, who was the last player to score a goal against Barca, uh, sorry, to score a goal against Cadiz. This one uh, maybe a little bit more tricky. Again, I would like to refer to uh, maybe the chat if the, our panel here need uh, a help, a lifeline. Uh, from the chat, or, or you got you got it, you got I the answer. I don't, I don't need a lifeline on this. Pablo's one. You know, it. Pablo knows yeah. it. But before you give your answer, Pablo, let's see. I'm seeing Fermin, Ferrans, uh, threes. So that so a lot of threes. Choosing Ferran, Pablo. Ferran. Pablo's gonna go with Ferran. I'm, I'm, my gut was telling me Ferran. <laughs> the chat has confirmed it as a Pablo. <laughs> Mark, we've got two Ferrans here, and I think the chat as well is pretty convinced that it's Ferran Torres. It's the shark, it's the shark, let's move, it's the shark. It's Ferran Torres who scored the goal against Cadiz. Remember that the first one was scored by Pedri in uh, 80 minutes, and Ferran scored in the other time, so it was the last, uh, the last score. And the last one, it's not relation with the game, not relation with the match, but do you know which Barca legend turns 46 today? It's his birthday, it's Carlos Puyol, it's Ronaldinho or Patrick Kluivert. Barca legend, his birthday today. Can you give me the answer, please? Wow. It's about that time where uh, I start feeling very old. <laughs> uh, Puyol, Dino or Patrick Kluivert, three Barca legends without a doubt, is turning 46 today. Uh, let's see what the live chat is saying. This is again a, quite a tough one, there. unless you've got Google at hand. And oh, I'm seeing a lot of ones, a lot of puyis on got, the I've chat. Got, I think I've got this one again. You got this one? I think so. What you got? Where you got? I'm going Puyol. Carlos Puyol, yeah. the El Capi, the captain. Jamie, I've I've got, I'm handed it to. <laughs> I've, I've, been, I've been out in the sun, not not on Twitter today, so I'm I'm going blind. I might I'm going to go with what, what my gut was, which was Kluivert, but I'm I'm guessing. Well, yeah. From what Pablo says in the chat, I'm, I'm guessing it's Pujol, but I'll, I'll go with Kluivert. Mark, put us out of our misery. The chat, so I the, think, have got a clear answer, idea. Go Mark on. to the disco. Look at him, the lights. <laughs> <laughs> if you follow our social media in uh, X Twitter, in former Twitter, in X, we have the key. It's Carlos Puyol, our captain, who today is his birthday. So happy birthday to Carlos Puyol. 46 today is uh, his birthday. So. For, uh, for Barca Life to Carlos Puyol, happy birthday to you. It's a, it's a number, you know, I love stats, so happy birthday to Carlos Puyol, turns 46 today. Well, happy birthday from uh, all of us here at uh, Barca Studios as well to Carlos Puyol, an absolute legend, 46 years old. You wouldn't say so when you look at him. He, he still looks like he could go out and play. I mean, his physique is, is just incredible. I, I was going to say that. I, I, I knew it was his birthday, but and then I saw 46 and I thought, have I got the wrong answer here? Yeah. Because, I mean, God, time flies, eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, um, Mark, 
the atmosphere is slowly but surely uh, getting heated over there in Nuevo Mirandilla. How are things? How's the atmosphere? Does it feel like it's uh, the people are pumped for it? Is there optimism or are they scared that Barca are in town? Is there a bit of fear? Well, people said that they uh, they think that Barca is the favorite to win today, but they think that with all the changes that Xavi is making in the lineup and, of course, the game that Barca will have against Paris Saint-Germain, they have an option. They have an option. What I want to say is that I love the DJ. Dance of 90s, Fruit from Desire, sounding uh, oh, since oh, the last yeah, seconds there in Omi and Dia, so it's incredible, the, the atmosphere that is generating uh, right now. But they hope, they hope to win Barca again because they think that Barca is thinking in the game against Paris Saint-Germain. Well, let's hope that they're uh, not doing that and actually focused at the task as at hand. Uh, as you know, uh, Mark, as well, Xavi Hernández said in the post, uh, in the pre-game press conference, rather, that, of course, a win here is vital to keep the hopes alive and uh, to keep the title race as tight as possible, especially with the Clásico on the horizon next week. So. Fingers crossed, let's hope for a win. Uh, and in the meantime, Mark, uh, we're going to discuss a little bit more about the starting 11s here with the studio panel. Uh, maybe see if you can get your hands on uh, some churros con chocolate. What, what do you think? Well, I, I, I didn't really know. I didn't really know. I, I don't listen to you at all, Diego, because there's a big uh, music here. I, I have uh, an enormous atmosphere, and I didn't know if you want to play with me because I have some numbers to play with you. You know that I love the sacred numbers, and I have three numbers for you. No churros, no chocolate, but I have numbers for you. So I, I don't know if we are ready, but at all, I want to say to you that one number, secret number for today is number five. So okay. Diego, Jamie, and Pablo, do you think what this five can be. So we have to guess what the secret number represents. Five. Why is five significant? Again, we'd love to hear from the people in the chat. What is five? Why is it so significant in this case? Any idea, Pablo? There we go. I think Here this has blown it. I think the multiple choice has blown it. Yeah, it has. Well, we, we're actually see, we're seeing it on our screens <laughs> right that. now, Mark. We're seeing the results. It's five consecutive <laughs> clean sheets in La Liga. Yeah, this uh, the incredible number because remember that Barca uh, has received a lot of goals uh, from the all the season, but the last games in the league, Barca uh, has received uh, another goal. So the other numbers are four and three. Important numbers. Important numbers. That number four. Uh, it's an incredible number because number of goals scored by Barca in Cadiz last season. 4-0 for Barca. And the last number for me, because I have to go behind the goal to my position, is number three. Number three, number three is players who has four yellow cards. So let's care, take care, because if Christensen and Real Romeo receive a yellow card, they cannot play against uh, Real Madrid next uh, Saturday, uh, next Sunday, sorry. And of course, also Gundogan has four yellow cards, but he's on the bed. So Gundogan, yep. Christensen and Real Romeo are warned. So these are the numbers. I have to run, Diego, because all the people are saying me to go behind the goal. So bye-bye. Let's, uh, let's listen to me when I'm in the position. So bye-bye, Diego, Excellent. Pablo. Thank you, Mark. We're going to be connecting with you during the game. Uh, you see there that uh, the atmosphere is heating up. It's getting nice and tense. You see that the mood is good over there in Cadiz, uh, as it is, of course, here with our panel. And my good, my goodness, is the mood good? I mean, what a week it has been, of course, uh, starting with that thrilling victory in the Champions League over in Paris. Yeah, season's come alive for Barcelona, really it has. I mean, I think there were maybe moments in the season where people thought it potentially was falling away, but my goodness me, is it alive right now. Barca have put themselves in a good position after that first leg against Paddy San Germain. And we're seeing on our screen now the highlights of that game. Jamie, what a night it was. It was a, a night that we had marked red on our calendars. Did you expect the result, though? Um, honestly, no. And it started unfolding kind of as we, I expected to, to unfold, and then all of a sudden, Barca gave it that twist. You see it in the 37th minute, Rafinha's first goal after that beautiful pass as well from Lamina Mal with the outside of the boot. Donnarumma getting a touch to it, but then Rafinha taking it on the first hit as well. Beautifully placed into the back of the net, whizzing past the PSG players. And then this happened. We know how Dembele, how lethal he can be, not with 
his right foot only, also his left, and he made the equalizer. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we, we know that you're right. You saw it on the trademark Dembele to us, yeah. really. I mean, on Rafinha, I think he's a top player. And we see when we go to when we go when we go 2 1 down here, I think obviously the warning signs were going off here. I think to go 2 1 down, you know, maybe the ghosts start appearing that Xavi spoke about. But mm -hmm. Barca's response was, was key. What a ball from Pedri off the bench, by, by the First way. First touch. Exactly. You know, coming off the bench like that after that many months out, only the top world class players can do that. That's what Pedri is. But Rafinha, I want to say a word for him because yeah. I think he's. I think he's undervalued, underrated sometimes Absolutely. at Barca. For me, he's a top player, always contributes to games, did it last season too to help Barca win La Liga and that performance in a game like that against Paris Saint-Germain, that's huge. Massive. I think his goal production is something like a goal every 84 minutes, something like that, and then this happened. The birthday boy, Andreas Christensen on his birthday, scoring the 3-2, also another super sub by Xavi. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, he's, he's proven in the air he can do it, but He's kind of, he's, he's been injured, he's he come back and to go out on a night like that, to come back from, you know, for a remontada all of their own, if you like, in, in, in Paris, it was, yeah, one of those mythical moments, I think, in history and hopefully it will be one that we look back on come the end of the season and go, that was an important moment, yeah. not just for Christensen, not just for Barca, but, but for this whole campaign and this whole team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it really was a dream scenario, wasn't it? I mean, first going up uh, one goal to nil, then having to come back from being a goal down as well, as they say so beautifully in Spanish, and sabido sufrir, they knew how to suffer <laughs> yeah. Xavi's team, they knew how to absorb that press and then also respond in just formidable fashion in a very hostile atmosphere. I mean, <laughs> let's not, you know, beat around the bush and let's not kid ourselves. Uh, there's not a lot of love between these two sides. Yeah, yeah, and that's important in the Champions League, by the way, because you're not going to get it your, your, all, all your own way in the in the entire game. So that is incredibly important that Barca were able to do that, and that speaks good volumes of where the team is right now. I think. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't we? Uh, we're seeing that the players are taken to the pitch. Why don't we go around the panel here and guess the score? for tonight's match. Of course, we want to hear from you in the chat as well, so blow up the chat with your score predictions. But let's start with Jamie. Uh, I think it's going to be 3-1. I think it's going to be 3-1. I think they've sh shocked us a little bit with the starting lineup, and, and maybe mm. I was a bit more confident than I should have been uh, when I made my prediction. But I, I think they're carrying such momentum, this Barca. They're so confident. And they know that there's some big matches coming up, and so these players are going to want to prove their point. They want to prove that they deserve the minutes in these next two matches. And also, they need the three points to take with them for next Sunday. So, 3-1, mm. I think. I think this Barca is fired up for it, and I think we're going to see some goals. Pablo, 2-1 we're seeing here on the screen. Yeah, I've gone for 2-1. I mean, you mentioned the fact that Barca made a lot of changes. I think Cadiz are going are gonna to look at that and yeah. try and pounce. I really do. And I think that already this game would have been huge for them, even with a, a gala left for Barca, right? But I think, obviously, with the changes, I think it's going to be a narrow game. It's always difficult going to the, the Nueva Mirandia. I know Marc Brau told us there about the 4-0 last season, but to me, that was, an impress two before. That, yeah. That, yeah, that was an impressive result last season. A bit of an anomaly. Exactly. So I think right. usually when we come here, it's narrow, it's tense. We've been defeated here uh, in the past, so I've gone 2-1. Well, we're seeing that uh, Mark Brau went for a solid 2-0 as well. Uh, I'm not sure if we can uh, connect with Mark Brau already or if we do so later on in the game. Mark, you're going for a very solid 2-0 victory. Yeah, we hope, we hope. Uh, what I have to explain, live came from Cadiz, it's incredible, the atmosphere. I don't listen to you at all because I have... Uh, an incredible sound of one of the stands in Cadiz. You can you can listen to him, I think, because it's very very loud. And uh, well, what I expect for this game is that tonight, Cadiz fans want to be the player number 12. So we have to fight against them. But also we have to explain that Cadiz is one of the teams who won less games at home. Mm. Maybe it can change tonight. We didn't want to do. <laughs> Okay, well, that's an interesting stat. That's some, something uh, encouraging indeed. Why don't we go over the starting 11s for both teams one more time? Mm. Let me start with the home side. We know that it's uh, Ledesma and Gold, the back line made of Carcelen, Chust, uh, Usu, and Hernandez. Then it's Navarro, Ruben, Alcaraz, Alex, and Ruben Sobrino in the midfield. And up top, it is the striking partner, Chris Ramos and Juanmi. In the case of the visitors of Football Club Barcelona, it's Marc Andre Ter Stegen, the man in between the three 
three sticks. The defensive line is made up of Marcos, uh, Al um, Marco Alonso back as well with the squad. Of course, uh, we're happy to see that. Andreas Christensen, Pau Kubarsi, and Hector Ford, the youngster, on the uh, in the right back position. The midfield: Fermin Lopez, Oriol Romeo, and Sergio Roberto. And it's João Felix, Victor Roque, and Ferran Torres. That will make up the three forwards for Fubu Club Barcelona. You see that uh, the ball has already kicked off. The ball is rolling over in Nuevo Mirandilla. All eyes now set on the game. Match day 31. We're going to go for three points here to keep up the chase with the league leaders, who, of course, played earlier today as well. We know that Girona lost against Atletico de Madrid. So uh, that is good news in the case of Fútbol Club Barcelona to make sure that, uh, well, we could increase the uh, point cushion mm. with uh, the other Catalan club. And in the case of Madrid, I think, well, the last time I checked, they were leading by one yeah. goal to nil against it's, Mallorca. Uh, I'm not I, sure how it ended. I believe it was full-time 1-0. Full time, it, 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 I will so confirm, it stayed. I will confirm. It is. Yeah. Okay. So in fact, the, the the point difference right now is 11 points, as a matter of fact, uh, with the league leaders. So three points yeah. are more than needed tonight. Yeah. Just looking at small detail already here. Barca in red shorts today. I don't think we had. Oh, them. We didn't. I don't think we had the red shorts. Yes. Since, uh, since we played Betis in the Supercopa last season, and I'm guessing that's because the kit clash with Cadiz on the blue shorts, but red shorts of Barca, new look. Hey, very observative. Good call there, yes, indeed. The last time you said was when? Against Betis in the Supercopa, I think, oh, when wow. we won on penalties okay. in the semi-finals last season, I believe. It really divides the fans, that one. I, I remember I remember during that match like on Twitter, yeah, yeah. some fans love it and other fans absolutely yeah, hate yeah. it. And it, it, it's a really divisive thing. I quite like it, it to be fair. I don't dislike it. No. I don't think it's bad at all. Barca regaining possession. Andreas Christensen whipping it over to the right side. Hector Ford. We spoke before the air. I spent a couple of seasons calling Barca B and Barca youth matches. Yeah. And Hector Fort was one of those standout people. And I remember when Barca last season had that like right back crisis. Mm. Remember with, when they were kind of like, they, they just signed Jules Koundé and they yes. were kind of, there's like, he's a centre back, but they've moved him out to the right. And there was this kind of, we we're like, what's Xavi going to do with this right back crisis? Mm -hmm. And they're like, Hector Fort was kind of just too young, just, just not physically kind of there yet. And so I'm really happy to see him getting. Well, watch first. out, Jamie, there's the first <laughs> shot. Going in shot over. Fired. The crossbar, Victor Roque sending a first warding, Ledesma's way, well outside the box, but uh, you can see that the Brazilian is eager to get on the score sheet. Mauricio Pellegrino in the dugout for Cadiz, taken over from uh, Sergio, Sergio who got sacked, um, mm. what was it, late January? Yeah. And like I said, I mean, Cadiz over these past few seasons, they've been a bit of a fairy tale story. Uh, managing to hold on to uh, their spot in the Spanish top competition in the Spanish first division. Is this the year that they will go down? We will have to wait and see, but it's kind of like, obviously there are opponents on the night, but I feel like Cadiz is a team as well as a town. It's just hard to hate on them. They're, they're, they're a likable, uh, likable team. Yeah. They've, they've done very well in La Liga, by the way. I will say yeah. that they've done really, really, really well. And I think Sergio was a big, big part of that. To see him go is, is almost sad in a way. And by the way, I mean, obviously it's come off of they had, after they had that run, uh, uh, you know, no wins in La Liga. That was always going to happen. No wins from September the 1st to March the 9th, by the way. But even after Pellegrinos came in, you know, they still didn't get a few wins for, for a few months. So they're coming forward here, though. Good block from Christensen. It's interesting what you mentioned there, though, Jamie, about Hector Ford, because you said him at right back. He's actually been brilliant. Well, left, left back, left as well. back yeah, for yeah, Barca yeah. this season is where he's played the most. So this is actually one of the rare times he actually gets to play in his favourite position tonight, isn't it? We're already I mean, in the fifth minute. Sorry, Jamie, I just no, wanted no. to ask uh, the chat as well and th our panel here tonight. Who do you think the first scorer is going to be of the night? We had some options on the screen uh, earlier. Maybe we can pull them back up to see uh, what the options were. The front Ferran three. Torres, Joao Felix, Victor Roque. So the three forwards are the options. You can also choose another name, of course. Just let us know in the chat. Who do you think, uh, boys, will be the first scorer in today's game? I'm going to go for my boy Ferran because, yeah. <laughs> because, I'm, with Ferran, because yeah. I said he'd be the most you know, influential <laughs> player for Barca tonight. I'm going to say that he gets the first goal. I, I am. I'm going to go Ferran. Okay. I'll go with Victor Roque then. Victor there in Roque. the middle, he had that first shot. 
I think uh, I think it'll be the Brazilian that takes the first goal of the night. We're seeing a lot of uh, Ferran Torres is in the chat, a few Victor Roques as well. I think Tigrinho. I think this is going to be a Tigrinho night. I think we will see the Brazilian teenager uh, get on the score sheet first tonight. At least that is my hope. Well, the first corner for the home side as they're making their presence felt in the Barca box. It's whipped in, cleared from the penalty spot. With the ball still in possession for Cadiz. As they're trying to shot a wild shot from way outside of the box that flies high over the crossbar. It's your boy Javi Hernandez there, Jamie. <laughs> Not to confuse him with Xavi Hernandez. I was going to there. the touchline as well. It's interesting that Mark Rao was speaking about the atmosphere. Oh, we can hear. We can, we can hear him. Yes, we can hear you, Mark. We can hear yeah, you. It's it's for to, today. I uh, today it's a little bit difficult. Uh, to to explain something, I don't know if the referee is saying to the to the one of the assistants of uh, the club. Uh, I don't know if it's this, but it's, it's quite difficult to ex to explain what is happening now. It's that we have a lot of speakers there, just next to our position, but it's the first time I see in a stadium a lot of speaker who is working like the megaphony and I think it, it, it's not it cannot be legal oh, wow. and it's the first time in a stadium that I can listen a loudspeak with a speaker with a microphone and the loudspeakers are behind the goal but very next to Ter Stegen very next to our position and do you listen to my microphone uh, as uh, as a loud uh, sh uh, shout uh, behind me so it's can, this it's this and I don't know if it, we can hear yeah, the I don't shouting. know if it's what the referee is saying to the yeah, yeah, but it's it's not for the fans. It's yeah, it's for the fans, but also with the loud speakers that are just uh, next to me. Okay, oh, wow. it doesn't it, it bothers me a lot. So I, I, I have to shout a little bit, and okay. I want to say that I love Cadet and I love the people, but I, I hate absolutely these loud speakers behind. Me. It's okay. something I want to say. Okay, let's focus on the game right now. Mark, we can hear you loud and clear, so there's no problem with the connection. Don't worry about that. Make sure that you're not going to blow up your eardrums, though. That's uh, a little bit crazy. I mean, as if the fans in Cadiz were not already loud enough. Uh, Andalusian fans known for their uh, loudness and way... Uh, I mean, they're, it depends they're, what they're shouting at him as well. They like, <laughs> speak behind him, you know. They got like this psychological warfare going on there. In, yes. uh, in I, I, I was well, just for tonight. I was just about to mention the atmosphere because it did sound incredibly loud, and I'm guessing that's what yeah. he's getting at. That yeah. they must have put a speaker behind the goal so that the atmosphere uh, from I the fans say, is even louder. If, the, if there's a competition of shouting, if there's a competition of shouting, I will win at all. I, I, I can swear it. I can swear it. Uh, and something important. I don't know if you say this, but Barca is playing today. Uh, with the shorts, uh, uh, with the red shorts. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you say it. It's because uh, the color of Cadet shorts is blue, and Barca changed only the shorts, uh, non the shirts and uh, the other parts of the of the wearing play, uh, kit. That's but it's right. quite different. I, I don't remember. I do, do you remember this kind of uh, wearing that we had in uh, 2006 when we won the second Champions League? It's quite similar to the image of Barca. It is, it is. We were actually, Mark, just discussing the uh, controversy that the red shorts kind of raise amongst the fan base uh, over the years. I remember 2006. In fact, I, I uh, bought those shorts. Those are the last pair of shorts that I got, the red ones, because it was so unique. But uh, the last time that they actually wore it, Pablo was just saying it, was in the Supercopa match against Betis, you said? Yeah, I, I last season, no, Mark, Mark, it was against in last the Supercopa semi-final against Betis, the one when we, when we won on penalties. Do you remember that, Mark? Last season, the Supercopa match against Betis? We've lost Mark. We've lost Mark. We lost him. He, he was overcame by the loudspeaker. Yeah. No, Sorry, guys. <laughs> no, I was saying Sorry, that pa Pablo mentioned that the last time we actually wore the red shorts was last season in the Supercopa match against Betis. Yeah. Well, yeah, great memories, uh, Paolo. Yeah, remember, <laughs> uh, we won that game in penalty shootout, if I remember. I was there. I was there. Yeah, yeah, it was the last, the last time that I think we, we had this, this color of shorts. For the moment, we have to explain that the, the match, the game is not very... Uh, we don't have a lot of attempts. Maybe one of the reasons because we are discussing for other things. Yeah, you can tell. It's a cagey affair at the moment. Certainly, mm. the battle in the midfield is uh, heating up at this point. 
Not a lot of chances so far. We had that shot from Victor Roque fly high over uh, the crossbar and a couple of wild shots from Cadiz as well that haven't uh, tested Marc-Andre Ter Stegen as of yet. We're 10 minutes in in the first half. Still everything level, nil-nil so far. I would say probably the kind of match that we expected. I mean, keep in mind that this is such a, uh, a new starting 11 in the case of Football Club Barcelona. Mm -hmm. These guys really haven't played much together at all. Yeah, exactly. I, I, th I think it is the sort of game we expected, especially away and over Mirandi. We now have a bunch of the big game is for Cadiz. Had a good chance there that they just touched on. That made it offside, but they were in down the left-hand side and he not got a touch, a touch on the ball. So, decent opportunity there, got, gone missing for Cadiz. I don't think Ferdinand Torres was coming around on the cover to help Hector Ford, but that's a decent challenge from him there. But, I mean, from a Cadiz point of view, we knew they were going to make it difficult for Barca. I don't think it was going to be you know, a free-flowing game with loads of spaces in behind. And I actually said after the PSG game, I think one of the reasons Barca looked so threatening and maybe enjoyed it so much, are they going to, never going to get a goal kick there, Barca, was because, unlike in a lot of La Liga games, PSG left a lot of spaces in behind. That's not going to happen tonight. That isn't going to happen tonight. Cadiz are going to sit in, they're going to make life hard for Barca, la, la, la. and we're already seeing that. Go on, Mark. Now, Marc Andre Ter Stegen is playing from inside Ooh. the box. It's like one of the songs that they play behind the goal. It's the thing. They say Ooh. something, the fans, that I, I don't want really to, to explain <laughs> in English what they are saying. But for the moment, Barca is not comfortable in the pit, uh, guys. It's not comfortable. Cadet is not playing very defensively. It's no, uh, they're, high they're pressure. Really high. After Barca is passing the midfield, mm. yeah, the press, but uh, when Barca pass the midfield, uh, Look at that, Cadiz. All the players are inside their part of the field. Yeah. Barca has to be very patient today, and maybe it's one of the reasons that they, uh, Xavi made a lot of changes in the lineup. Eight changes in the lineup between a uh, game against Paris Saint Germain and today. We won the fresh legs, uh, Oscar Hernandez said. Uh, we uh, listened to him in the warm up that they want fresh players, and uh, especially Vito Roque, who played, uh, has a long time that he's not playing something. I, I want to explain also uh, an important thing uh, on the lineup today. It's about Hector Ford. Hector Ford is a right back today. Eight games with Barca, it's only the second one as a right back. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, interesting. You've got to be careful here is another attack for Cadiz. This cross, unable to connect with uh, the Cadiz forward as Barca are trying to walk it out of the danger zone. Very high press indeed from Cadiz. They're very aggressive. You can tell that they're eager to uh, pick up the three points. I mean, their, their life is on the line here at this moment, of course. Uh, sitting 18th. They want to get out of that relegation zone, and th that's how they're approaching this game. Uh, very aggressive, intense, and uh, pressing Barca at any given moment. And, and they can afford to leave it on the pitch, right? Like yeah. Barca have got two very big matches coming up, one in just a few days' time. They, they can't give it. 110% like Cadiz can and uh, Cadiz are, are going to leave it all on the pitch and they're going to give it their all because they're, like you said they're, they're fighting for their lives yeah yeah absolutely I mean another another point to make in the defence there of course Hector Ford <laughs> usually is, is, a, is a right back usually <laughs> well, when he I, I've seen him play on both Marcia, sides with a with yeah but playing on the left Marcos Alonso is another one who actually right. was signed as a left back yeah. hasn't actually played left back that much for Barca after five he, months but, 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 Five but, months but, without Marcos Alonso. Yeah, yeah is, is, is well as well. And also when he signed, of course, he had Jordi Alba and Balde there too, who sure. sort of came into the first team. So he's exactly. actually, when he came in, played a lot of centre-back. For example, yeah. in the Copa del Rey semi-finals, played at centre-back away to Real Madrid last season. Yeah. Marcos Alonso, other games included. The position that he's, he's, he's familiar with, though. Yeah. I mean, it, it, his time at Chelsea as well, he's played at centre-back. And he's polyvalente in that regard, uh, isn't he? What's the English word for that? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he's versatile. But versatile. He's a versatile player. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a solid back line that Barcelona put out. Mm, it's you know, just they, that I mean, they, the they fact that they haven't up played as much much you want, but yeah. that's a solid back line. You mm. know, with Christensen and Kubarsi in the back, and but of and course, this this starting eleven, the point I was making earlier. I mean, they they will not have been used to playing very much uh, together yeah. at yeah. all. Um, yeah, and I think that all that then always takes a bit of time to get a bit of rhythm in the game, and I think that's what we're seeing in early stages here. Look, like I said, we probably would have expected a bit of a cagey game at this game in, the, in this one anyway, but because you make so many changes to the lineup, it takes a bit of time to gain the rhythm in the game, to get people understanding their positions, their roles, you know, the links on the pitch with other players. I think that's probably what we're seeing a bit at the moment. Well, we're uh, 15 minutes in, nil-nil still on the scoreboard. 
I would like to address the audience a little bit because a lot of you will be following us live on Barça One. We know that a lot of you are watching us on YouTube as well. Make sure that you sign up to Barça One. It is your home for all of your Barça content completely for free. Yes, indeed, you get all of the full matches, you get all of the documentaries, you get a daily news show, you've got all of the, uh, uh, well, Jamie, the game shows that Barça Studios produced, uh, one that you starred in, <laughs> Gump No Kitchen. It was a classic. You can watch Jamie Coles in action as he cooks off with some of the uh, Barça players of the first team, the women's team, and the basketball team. Fond memories, Jim. We, we made some good food as well. <laughs> Fun, yes. Well, I say we. They made some good food. I <laughs> ate it. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. No, no. It was, a, it was a good program. It was uh, one of those where you know you don't get Pedri and Eric Garcia cooking burgers against each other. What, what was every what day. Was your favorite episode? <sighs> you can't choose a favorite child, Diego. <laughs> we did. We did. One, yes, you can, Jamie. We did. One, you and I know you. <laughs> We did one with the basketball players, who uh, whose names are both escaping me, I, uh, and but we did we tortillas patatas, uh -huh. and it was like a tra you know the, the traditional Spanish omelet. It was Davies. I it remember. was Davies. It was Davies, and yes. he made a version with with bags of crisps with with patatas de bolsa. Okay, uh -huh. and it was like inspired by like this. Uh, I think it was a Fran Adrian yes, recipe yes, that yes, went yes, viral yes, on right. YouTube. Uh -huh. And it was really good. Like we were like, this one is not going to like the, the, the real potatoes are going to take it until we tried it. And I mean, there was there was my myself and um, and Johan, who was like a professional chef, TV chef. And all three of us were like, this is not going to be good at all. <laughs> and and it was. It was really really good. Uh -huh. And Brandon Davis and 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 a Barca player who he was from Valencia and and was sort of like he's gonna have the upper hand here being from Valencia. Okay. His name <laughs> escapes me, and I'm really sorry. It was a few years ago I'm now that we think. filmed this. There's a lot happened in my life since <laughs> then. Uh, and it was one of the early episodes, but it was really really good. Good episode, okay. uh, and I had I had played one on one with Brandon Davis. That was, uh, uh, was it was it Claver Victor Claver? Wow, what a memory you've got, Diego! It was was. It? it was Victor Claver. Are they whispering in your ear? They, no, no, <laughs> no. I could use some help, but no, not yet. <laughs> it was. It was Victor no, Claver. It was. Yeah, it yeah, was. Yeah, it Brandon was. Davis. I know. I remember. I would always uh, have little sneak peeks as Barca have got uh, has a half of a chance here. Joao Felix, volley on the volley, keeping this one uh, wide from uh, Le Ledesma's goal. But uh, no, I remember that episode. I remember as well uh, having a sneak peek at the end of one of uh, the recordings and seeing Serginho Dest just eating away while the set was pretty yeah. much empty, but he was just standing <laughs> yeah. there eating yeah, his we spaghetti. Yeah, we were it? backing up. And, and he was like, oh, this is really good. I'm going to finish this. Uh, he'd, he'd just come from training. He was hungry, you know? Was, ah, okay. One of those, uh, I think, infamous Ronald Koeman training sessions. Right. Right. And, uh, and yes, Virginia Desk was, was hungry. And uh, yeah, we also we, we, we tried snails with uh, Ingrid Engen cool? and Fridolina Rolfo. Well, yeah. Uh -huh. That was a uh, French dish. And, uh, and we tried chili peppers with, with, and, and spicy sauce with Pedri. Yeah, it was good. It was a uh, good program. Nice. I did, I did press ups and, and worked out with, with the Damatrari. That was. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Well, you experience is second to none here at Boston Studios. <laughs> Adama versus Jamie. That's hopefully uh, we should have recorded that at the time. <laughs> that would have been that would have made for an interesting program, I think. But anyways, as you're here, guys, you can uh, watch it all on Barça One. So make sure that you download the app. It's uh, you can uh, sign up through the website as well. I mean, it's a no-brainer. You get all the Barça content for free. Go and sign up. In the meantime, still uh, nil-nil here, Pablo. Yeah, yeah. It started out as a KG affair. It remains that. Yeah. You can tell. I, I, I'm getting a sense. I mean, you can tell that these players are, are, are trying to get accustomed to each other as well. It's not the usual Barca starting eleven that we uh, have seen over this past few matches. Yeah. Not any chances really. We right. had a half one for João Felix a moment ago. Ball in from Ferran Torres from that. A more old start, old school Ferran Torres sort of play, just whipping the ball in from the right hand side. That's with Valencia days, like I was saying. And Jao Felix at the back post couldn't get the best connection on the ball. We just saw Xavi up in his little box, looking down in the yeah. darkness. Um, that's brilliant from Corbati as well, by the way. Playing again, um, we maybe thought he would have, would have been one of the ones rested, but playing again and playing at you know a very good level. I'm imagining this game will open up at some point, but we wait. Uh, 
we wait for that moment as of now like you say cagey affair no real chances half ones we've had there is chavi in his little there he is there. box in the darkness Wavy, 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 then. He did, the timing of that was <laughs> a little wave to go away uh, from the darkness. Watch on from uh, he may be watching on Barcelona. the top in his <laughs> maybe he's watching imagine, by someone. I imagine Chavi's a subscriber. Ah, absolutely, we can believe that he's watching us. Yeah, it's not the first time that he's watching he coach. up from the stands. You guys know how many times it's been, Mark. Mark, will know. Maybe maybe anyone knows. Mark is gonna know as a. Uh, Dangerous cross there. Long cross. You have to repeat me. You, do, to you have to repeat. Post. You that have to repeat me because I'm just. <laughs> uh, I'm just chasing your ears? incredible atmosphere. How here. are your no, eardrums? I, I, I really love Cadiz, but to, I, I hate <laughs> the game right now. Well, I, I, I can. I don't know whatever I said. Um, sorry for my English today because I, I don't really. What I'm saying, tampoco sé lo que diría en castellano, tampoco sé lo que diría en catalán. Je ne sais pas que dire en français. Yo no solo hablar italiano. Everything I say, I did. I don't listen to me. So what's the question, guys? If you speak me slow, 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 and you shout, maybe I can listen to you. The question was, how many times has Xavi been up in the stands watching on the team while Oscar Hernandez has been in the dugout this season? Well, Put it last, last, uh, ah, this is a, so, take care. <sighs> Mark, was that great take it with a massive save. With, what? Yeah, right. incredible, incredible, still incredible save by Ter Stegen. And another option. Another shot here. Yeah, and the wall, the ball is for Ter Stegen. Luckily yeah. that uh, shot by Chavi the one. Yeah, go on. Go on. yeah, sorry guys, uh, this season, was in second and third round remember that Xavi was sent off in the first game of the league against Getafe and he didn't uh, was in the he wasn't in the bench against Cadiz of course in Montjuic was Oscar Hernandez and then in the next game that Barca played in Villarreal also Xavi was in the stands the other game was against Mallorca because Xavi was suspended due to five yellow cars and last game against Las Palmas, the same. So, five games this season without uh, Xavi. And we have to say that four games until today, four wins with Oscar Hernandez in the bench. So, today we expect a win, of course. Okay, well, that's encouraging. I knew you would know the answer, Mark. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, while we're seeing some of the statistics uh, on our screen here, 70 percent uh, percent possession, excuse me, for Barca. But uh, a dangerous shot now coming from the home side, as uh, you saw as well. The first chance and then the second one, a half chance, that save from Juanmi. But a massive save by Mark andre Ter Stegen to keep the score level for the moment. Still nil-nil here, match day 31 between Cadiz and Barca. As uh, Barca now are out on the attack, looking for an opening, trying to find a way to crack open the defense. Played. Maybe now in comes a cross, but it's cleared for a corner kick. The first nice. corner, I think it is uh, for Football Club Barcelona. Yeah, first, first, first yeah. yeah. You're right. You're right, Diego. First corner, remember that uh, in Paris we scored a goal for a corner. It was the first of the year. In 2024, goal scored by Christensen was the first of the year. So maybe we can score today the first goal of the year by corner in the league. Oh, wow. That would be nice. Marcos Alonso putting in the cross to the far post. I'm interested to, to see to that. I'm sorry, Dio, I'm interested to see Alonso take it. That's not a bad effort from Fermin. I'm interested to see Alonso mm. take it purely because he's a very good goal scorer. Alonso scored an awful amount of goals for Chelsea in and around the area, and he's good in the air too. So uh, was I know he's got he's got a great you know set piece on him. That is that is also absolutely true. But he's in the air, I would have, kick, in, yeah. in the air, I would have thought that you know he would have been in the box. But you know, interesting, it wasn't. That's true. It's the Good uh, to point that out, Marcos Alonso. He's got a lethal free kick. I remember when he first arrived, he would often uh, sort of square up and uh, be an option himself, as we're seeing there. Foul called. It was on. Uh, was it? I'm actually surprised Alonso hasn't scored a free kick Felix? for Barca. Sorry? I'm actually surprised Alonso hasn't scored a free kick for Barca. I know there was a thing after after, been, yeah. after after Messi left, it was like, who would score the next one? In yeah. the end, it was Ferran on the man on our screens right now against Betis in the 5 0 this season. Exactly. But I thought Alonso would be the, ma the man. He was so good at them at Chelsea. Another cross whipped into the Barca box as uh, they'll let it out for a throw in. Let's 
take a look again here. Fermin Lopez with uh, another shot from outside of the box. Until now, Barca really haven't Fermin, been able to uh, test Ledesma the too much, Mark. Love players today in Cadiz. Yeah, no, not too much. I, I want to talk about Fermin. Very loved today. Uh, he's not from Cadiz, yeah. but he's uh, from Huelva, who is uh, quite uh, close to to the city. And they say to me that the family is coming to to watch to him play. And he's one of the players who do more things uh, for the moment. Uh, mm, he yeah. forms another option, Very second active. corner for Barca. And maybe it's a player uh, with his mobility and the way that he's playing can be one of the keys. I remember that in the warm-up we ask uh, our fans and we ask uh, to Jamie and to Pablo, to you, what uh, can be the key player for today. And one of this was uh, Fermin, that maybe it's one of the most uh, players who play better today. It's a good point. It's a good point, Mark. Very active uh, Fermin Lopez with back-to-back -back shots. Now generating a corner. Marcos Alonso putting it mm. in. Ledesma, though, securing that one in his gloves as he's trying to play that ball quickly. And uh, Galif now transitioning back into offense. It's going to be a booking, isn't it? Yeah. A tactical foul so. here to slow down the game. And, of course, the customary yellow card, yellow card for Kubarsi. Kubarsi, yeah. No, I think that's what I like about Fermin, what Mark was just saying there. He sets the tone a little bit. I, I've almost said it all season long. With the absence of Gavi, I think he's really important for that. I think maybe games can just pass us by a little bit if there's not someone like Fermin to just grasp it inject a bit of energy into the side and I think he does that really well today might be the sort of game we need that 26 mm. minutes gone Caddy to have had the best chance of the game just a moment ago and apart from that there hasn't really been an awful lot to you know uh, call home about so I think it's important you know that a player like Fermin gets on the ball a lot that he's active uh, for Barca and, and hopefully he can do more of that as the game goes on because Barca I think will need a spark you know maybe a long shot like he just tried there that went out for a corner you know it deflected far wide but could be something like that to break the deadlock in this one well it's just as well that uh Pau Cubarsi sacrificed himself uh, for the team, making that tactical foul, getting, uh, earning himself the yellow card. First yellow card of the game, of course. Keep in mind that Christensen Oriol Romeo cannot see the yellow card. That is in the case, of course, that because uh, we don't want him to be suspended for the next Liga match uh, coming up next week, as well as Koundé, but uh, the Frenchman is uh, the Frenchman is on the bench. Well, he's on a. Sorry. Gundogan is on a... I can't hear you. Gundogan is on a... Is on yeah, a yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Oh, Gundogan, it's on the sorry. Bench. Yes, yes, yes. It's on Gundogan, the bench. remember? Excuse me, not Gundogan, yes. Lewandowski, Inigo and Cancelo are suspended for today. This one is Xavi. Yes. Uh, and in the league, it's Christian San Romeo and Gundogan who is in the bench. That's I don't right. think Gundogan will play. Remember that yesterday mm. in the press conference, uh, Xavi said that they want to give some rest to Gundogan, the uh, most used player to yeah. this season. Uh, Kunde is also one of the players who has more minutes. Uh, I don't think that they. I think they don't play today. Uh, we have to. We have to wait. But I think they won't play today. Kunde and Gundogan uh, due also to this important game against Paris Saint Germain. Remember that Christensen and Sergio Roberto maybe are in the lineup because they won't be in the game against Paris Saint Germain. They are suspended. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's nice for Charlie to have options in midfield again now. After <laughs> you know, there's so many injuries that they faced throughout the season has left him with with little else to go with. That's right. Uh, yeah, no, it's great to see that the injury list, uh, the infirmary slowly but surely has uh, come down again. Just uh, Gavi and Alejandro Balde, of course, still out uh, for the remainder of the season. And we wish them a speedy recovery. But uh, it is the, indeed good to see that Xavi's got some depth in particular in that midfield. And Algo Arce mm -hmm. with a long range effort here. All, but, the uh, coming up up well. huh? <laughs> All the Messia boys are coming up to have a shot. Yes. It's been that sort of game, really. Um, it, it, this was another one of those games, though, because of all the suspensions we've already got, but also the amount of players on a yellow card. It was with our PSG midweek, but every time a foul is made, you're thinking, is he one of the ones who could be suspended for next game? And it's a bit similar today. The, the second Corbat C made that foul, I was like, is he on the list? You know, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's one of those, and that happened a lot midweek. I know Sergio Roberto and Christensen, of course, got booked midweek and we won't have them on Tuesday night. So that's, that is a, a shame and a miss. That looks like a foul on Vito Roque for me, but not oh, going to be given. Um, but yeah, Kovacic had a long range shot just a moment ago. There's a good chance, maybe. Yeah, nice nice three ball. Been trying to play a deep for Ferran Torres, but a little bit too much mustard, as you Brits say on that pass. <laughs> Us Brits. Us Brits. You Brits. Half hour gone. And Gadi here Ooh. with uh, 
Well, an Let's opening. Oh, yeah. 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 Be careful here. Yeah, really Christensen. good defending. I know. I I know. I know. I see. I see plays uh, before than you because uh, you're watching from TV. And sometimes I will talk before you see the image. But when I say this kind of things, I think that you will be uh, will be quite will be more quiet if I say this. <laughs> Great action by yeah, Christian Zero. Keep us on our toes, uh, Mark, for sure. Let us know when the danger comes. Uh, Chris Ramos there, seeing his chance uh, get blocked. As Juan Felix clearing this one. Kicking it high up Ooh. the field. What do you think uh, at this point, Pablo? Yeah. If you're Oscar Hernandez, if you're Xavi, what are you going to tell your team what are you looking for in your team is it i mean the possession here we're seeing 66 possession Barca are honing the ball but what do they have to do with it in that final third in order to create more chances is it that final pass is it the the movement into space trying to exploit those free spaces mm -hmm. a little bit more or is it just merit to the Cadiz defenders that Barca are unable to uh find themselves in that final third uh, these are the games you have to take command of yourselves you can either you know these games can either lull out into these nil nils or one nils or you can really say no we're gonna apply the pressure on this defense number one you have to move the ball a lot quicker i think in my opinion i've seen that these games play out a lot but you have to move the ball really quick really quick from side to side runners in behind is massive because if it's all in front of Cadiz, they're just going to love that all day long they're going to love if it's slow passing in front of them they're going to be really comfortable with that. They've got everything in front of them. They know if they swing, if, if Barcelona decide to swing a ball in the box, we'll be comfortable in the air because we've got them, you know, height-wise. But you've got to be, I think, move the ball really quickly from side to side. Do, do, do you think it's that, though? Like, a, a yeah. matter of moving it quicker. I feel like yeah. the ball's moving quickly, but it's the accuracy is uh, yeah. what is missing. Also important bit. spaces between players as well, because right. if, if, if there's long balls, then of course it takes longer, even if you look like you're moving it quite quickly. If the spaces are a bit closer between the players and you know things can connect and link up a bit better, and then all of a sudden you can make a little one-two, a darting movement in behind. And I think that maybe Barca are lucky a bit at the moment. Spaces in between a lot of the midfielders is, is really big at the moment. I mean, we saw early on in the match that Cadiz were trying to come out aggressive, play the counter, Try yeah. and you know really sort of take advantage of it. Well, you can see it in the stats, you know, 36% yeah. possession. Um, but it really has been them that's kind of been driving forward much more, or that, at least that's the feeling I've had. Whereas Barca, have, you know, been happy to move it around, take their time. I think we are going to see a, a change in rhythm though in the, in the next sort of 10, 15 minutes uh, by Barca. And there you go. Nice cross, cross in. that flies Ooh. well, and in, in this man needed oh. to get a touch on that in order to make sure that didn't cross the goal and it hit the back of the net. Hector Ford surprising the Cadiz goalkeeper and earning Barca a corner kick. Yeah, cross, cross Incredible comes Incredible action by Hector Ford. I think it, it, it has to be a cross. It has to be a cross. It, it cannot be uh, you think a, so? an action, but it's a cross that <laughs> You was... can ask him that. Yeah, 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 it's a cross, but... Uh, yeah, m maybe, but maybe it's the, the biggest atom that Barca has today. Yeah. Players wrestling for position in the penalty area. Another shot from outside of the box, but once again, the same result. Sergio Roberto this time, miss kicking it and putting it well past uh, the three sticks of Ledesma. As we're taking a look again at Hector Ford trying to surprise. I, I think that's a shot, you know, I don't know. I Oof. think he's seeing Ledesma off of his goal line. I'm going to give the youngster credit here and say that uh, he was trying to put that into the back of the net. Generous. <laughs> <laughs> would have been celebrating it anyway had it gone in <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't have been stopping I'm telling the question you, had that gone in mark <laughs> if you would have asked him in the post game i'm sure he would have told you that that was an intended shot on goal there's no way that was a foul there's uh usu there well maybe if, if if the action was a goal of course i, I will ask to him <laughs> but uh, it depends on the, on the final score no it oh, you see the that, final score. Uh, Mark? I don't know if you saw that little <laughs> cheeky uh, play by Usu as uh, he went down. He immediately grabbed the ball as well, and then grabbed his knee. Uh, I guess he wasn't sure whether yeah. he had to grab for the ball or grab for his knee. But uh, either case, it is uh, Cadiz that will do the honors of getting a free kick. 
all games in Cadiz, all games in Cadiz, Diego, Pablo, and uh, and Jamie. Mm. It's that kind of of of, uh, of games. I remember that uh, last season, Barça scored four goals, as we said in our in our uh, secret numbers uh, before uh, the game starts. But all the goals were in the second half. Mm. And remember the games right. in Cadiz last season? Only one goal, uh, nil nil. So it's a quite similar game tonight. Uh, what the game that we played in the last seasons. That is true. That is a good point. All the yeah. goals last season came in that second half. And what a second half it was. Just needed one to open the floodgates. And maybe that is what is uh, missing here tonight as well. As uh, Ethan now. Yeah, it, it, I think throw in. We, last season we were in one of those moments where once the first goal came, Lewandowski had just arrived. I remember he scored two off the bench. Um, and, and all the goals just started flowing in. We were in one of those moods, really. Uh, but usually, you know, obviously it's very, very tight against Cali. This could be a good Maybe great now now driving forward. Energizer now. Bunny, Fermin Lopez pushing forward. Godly turn. Unfortunately, that ball getting intercepted. Stop that Fermin, guys. Stop that Fermin. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. Keep it going. Victor Roque was unable to uh, control it in the end, but he did win Barça. Another corner kick, this time from the right side, as uh, this man here is playing like a man possessed. Uh, you do feel that he is quite inspired on the night, playing in front of, uh, well, not, as you said, Mark, his home crowd, but certainly uh, his, home ter his home territory of Andalusia. Marcos Alonso put this one again. Time to the near post, Ooh, and here's oh, a shot good. and a goal! Well, what a well, goal, well, <laughs> Joao Felix <laughs> with an acrobatic bicycle wow. kick. What a way to open the floodgates, the floodgate, wow. the number 14, Neither Joao got it right. Felix. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my goodness, give me some of that, give me some of that. Barca, one goal to nil, right at the stroke of the nearly 40th minute. My goodness, and what Joao a goal Felix. as well. Brilliant. Joao man. Felix, man. The awareness, the quickness to take that as well. A bicycle kick, una chilena to open the score. Take a bow, son. Look My God. God, oh God, oh Calculated. God. Calculated. Wow. Finally beating Ledesma. I mean, oh He my didn't think that God. was going in. I mean, from this angle, it looked like it was going to... Oh my wide. God. Oh, I'll tell you what, it's one of those games where we've been looking for a moment of magic. I think that's the moment of magic Barca that, have been looking that's for. That's what was needed. We were speaking about something maybe a bit abnormal happening in the game. Flick on from a corner. I mean, that's not an easy skid at all from Jao Felix. Players and the way he goes down there. He's never, like never, never, never going to be given. <laughs> he gives Marcos Alonso a little kiss there, Jao Felix, and says thank you very much because that's a brilliant goal from him. And we were thinking before the game, who'd be the star man to maybe light this game up to make produce that sort of moment? No, maybe we should have said Joe Felix. Said Joe Felix. <laughs> well, hindsight is 2020, boys. It's his uh, seventh goal so far this season, and lucky number seven coming with a Chilena, an acrobatic bicycle kick. But the quickness, the awareness as well to take that in stride while being pretty much, you know, fouled and taken down. I think it was uh, Isa, um, Isaac there, the number 20, that was uh, getting a good hold on uh, Joao Felix, trying to prevent him to get to that ball. Mark, what a way to open the score. Maybe, maybe you can understand why I shot wow before you see the ball <laughs> yeah, I uh, was inside inside the goal it's because it's impossible to contain me because it's incredible the goal scored by Joe Felix number 10 of the season number 10 of the season oh, oh you're gonna see what happened but it's no goal stay quiet it's the ball going directly to Terry Stegen but it's a corner for Cadiz I'm going quickly 10 goals scored by Joe Felix this season seven in the league but 10 goals by Joe Felix and maybe it's the most exciting goal I don't know it's a, maybe of course it's the most beautiful score by Joe Felix and after the corner I, I want to play with you uh, the best bicycle kick goals that you remember for me I'm gonna say the Rivaldo one in 2001 but I think it's something interesting to discuss it reminds me of the Ronaldinho one against I think it was Villarreal where he kind of quickly yeah, sees the Villarreal right? yeah yeah quickly the, the quick thinking the quick reaction the turning as well and taking that uh, on the volley a beautiful kick but yeah I mean Mark no doubt about it I mean the most iconic bicycle kick Chilena and the history of football I would even say well, maybe there's a bit of bias here but it has to be the Rivaldo the the, the Chilena at the stroke of uh, the 90 minutes pretty much his hat-trick as well and to send Barca into the Champions League spots over Valencia 
that was that was maybe more iconic. One that came to mind for me immediately was Pedro against Real Sociedad. I think ah. it was season 2014-15. What Good. a golazo well, that was to make it 2-0. Wow. Right. Well, Cadiz here. Pa Pablo is very young, so Pablo, <laughs> I, I know I know you watch the goal, but for the people that are young like Pablo, please uh, put in your in your uh, in your browser, in internet. In YouTube or whatever you want, and of course in Barça One application, in Barça One Diego, because you can follow also historic games and uh, historic goals. Uh, is in 2001 mm. that goal 23 years ago, uh, incredible goal scored by Rivaldo. Uh, I'm gonna say also that there's another iconic bicycle kick. It was scored by Ronaldinho, but not was against Villarreal. The last goal by Ronaldinho, do you remember when it was in Calderon against Atlético de Madrid in 2008? Last goal of Ronaldinho was a bicycle kick, but the last bicycle kick called by Barca, I remember, uh, please help me, uh, I think was scored by Luis Suarez in a game against Sevilla in 2017. Uh, this is what my memories come to me. Uh, I, I, I don't know if uh, Pep Morero or, or one of you can follow or can search this goal, but I remember it was a Barça-Sevilla in uh, Camp Nou, or Barça-Sasuna, I don't remember yeah. all the game, I think it was against Sevilla. Sevilla. Uh, was scored by Luis Suarez in 2017. I'm good, I think. Mark, your memory is uh, second and none. But also, I have believe Also against Sevilla, season 2019-20, Luis Suarez as well. In a 4 0 win. In a I bicycle? Can't, no, another it? bicycle kick. It was, yes, Semedo crossed from the left. Oh, wow. And Luis Suarez bicycle kick, but also in 2016 17, both okay. times. Yeah. Well, we're getting uh, the competition is not only heating up <laughs> on the pitch of Nuevo Mirandilla, but also between Pablo and Mark. Who can remember more bicycle kicks? <laughs> I'm out of this. I'm checking out of this one. I mean, the two that came to mind was uh, Rivaldo and Ronaldinho. I bowed out. I bowed out. I love it. The I love it. <laughs> I, I love I love it. For the first time, I have someone to fight with in two yeah. things. For, for the moment, uh, there's nobody who can beat me. So I hope Pablo can beat me in the future. So I'm so proud that we have quite similar like me in the show. Yeah, Pablo, it's good. Nice. Uh, no one, no one can ever be like Marke. Eh? No one can ever be like Mar. It's it's the start of another Clásico here in Barça One between Pablo Wolves and Mark Brau. <laughs> And uh, you see that the things are heating up as well on the pitch a little bit. Things get a little bit chippy at the moment, uh, boys. You can tell that uh, the fans, of course, not happy. Neither of the players with this goal scored by Football Club Barcelona. It was uh, the first good chance on goal. And it's the first one that had to beat Ledesma as well. The other ones, yeah, let's call them half chances that went wide or high over the crossbar so far. As we're nearing the end of the first half. 42 minutes, we're in the 43rd. Barca leading by one goal to nil. And what a goal it was. João Félix, Barca's number 14, scoring with a Chilena, a bicycle kick to break the deadlock, to put Barca ahead. And uh, we, of course, welcome that goal ever so much. A bit of a psychological goal, perhaps, as well, for the home side before heading into the locker room. They did well so far of making it an uncomfortable affair for Barca but now find themselves trailing. And still a few minutes left to see if Barca can maybe double the lead before the stroke of halftime. I actually think Cadiz will be a little bit disappointed with the way this yeah. first half's gone. I'm going to say that because I think they started well and, like you said, Jamie, we're putting Barca under more pressure and sort of with the attacking team. Watch out, here's Pablo, here's another chance for Barca. Is it oh. the second one? Oh. It is cleared from the goal oh. line. Oh, my oh goodness. My gosh. Oh, my goodness. Fermin Lopez can't believe what just happened having seen his goal kick getting cleared from the goal i mean his his shot on goal getting cleared he must right have, he must have been line. already celebrating yeah yeah, yeah. Well, that, i was that too went from his foot Ooh. an excellent job there oh. massive chance of barca should have been two 0 really and then Cadiz would have been even Just. more disappointed wouldn't they yeah but we'll have a look at it again here Diego. excellent job by the Cadiz defender choose to here oh my goodness i mean Oh. Good clearance, but that ball, fortunately for the number five, going yeah. right. I mean, and and then Ooh. mixing it up, it's almost gone through his legs. And he's just clawed through. it back from the death, really, hasn't he? Mark, what was the reaction from the home crowd there? 
well, was shouting a lot, but I have to say that for the moment, uh, Cadiz fans are losing the patience because yeah. in the last minute uh, after the goal, but also, of course, a few minutes before the goal, Barca is controlling absolutely the game, has the ball, has a big possession, and players like Fermin, Joe Felix, and uh, and Ferran are growing up in the in the pits, and all the uh, all the bad things that Cadiz had lived all the season is coming now to the pits. But mm. now it's time to play one of my favorite games. It's what can be the added time do you want to play with me guys okay Only 20 seconds to get the i'm gonna go for so quickly two minutes two quickly. minutes i'm gonna go for two minutes i'm gonna go for two as well not a lot's happened yeah you know, two stoppage time yeah i mean i'm gonna give i'm gonna say three okay jamie and the yeah, i'm gonna get two as well jamie let's go quickly two two <laughs> Jamie getting peer pressure okay, to say so two I here. Have the answer. And no one, no one is winning, guys. One, one minute. Oh, oh, I was close to saying you won. Like, like, nothing has happened. There's not been much stopping. No, yeah. well, and then you, you guys went two, and I didn't yeah. damage oh. myself. Oh, but I need to be careful here. Marc Andre to Stegen able wow. to stop that. Kwame nearly surprising the German goalkeeper, but Marc Andre to Stegen solid as always, of course, preventing Cadiz from getting their goal in the first half. Things still all level and just the one minute of extra time. And you know why Ooh. the linesman did that, right, Mark? And boys here, one minute in honor of Barca 1. We're here watching it live on Barca 1. The yeah. action taking place in Nuevo Mirandilla and uh, a little bit of a, a pushing battle breaking out on the pitch, Mark. Yeah, and it's a little... It's a little battle. I see a yellow car, two yellow cars, but you have to help me, guys, for the players that receive the yellow cars. Al Alcaraz and Sergio Roberto. Yeah. Alcaraz Sergio and Roberto, I think it's, I yes. Say, Sergio Roberto and Alcaraz. Remember that Sergio Roberto is receiving his third yellow car. Well, he's not uh, close to the five yellow cars that give the suspension. So third yellow car for Sergio Roberto, second yellow car. That the Barca player received today. Remember that the first one was for Kubasi, the second mm. this season in the league. We are passing the minute of the other time, but the yep. referee will give an extra option to Barca, the last option, the last attempt in the first half. One last chance for Barca to make it to at the stroke of halftime. Marcos Alonso will do the honors to put in this long free kick into the danger zone as uh, two players, Sergio Roberto and Alcaraz, Picked up a yellow card. That's three yellow That's cards so far in the game, then. As, it's uh, over. Things getting a little bit heated. And that is it. The first half has come to an end. Barca leading by one goal to nil. Managing to break the deadlock. And in what a way, a bicycle kick by this man that we are seeing on our screens. Joao Felix, Portuguese forward, doing the honors for Fubu Club Barcelona. And uh, getting a goal. And what a goal. We're seeing the replay <laughs> here as the ball was headed on. You see uh, Itha trying to make a meal of it as uh, he tried to claim something there that he was hit in the face. <laughs> but uh, it was nothing but an absolute beauty. Halftime then. First half. Kind of what we expected, I suppose. KG affair is, I think, the, the term that we've used so far the most to describe this first half. Pablo, mm. your impressions. Yeah, a cagey affair, almost what was expected with a rotated team. Yeah. I must admit, I'd expected more from Cadiz. I was just making the point before halftime that I actually think the Cadiz fans, Marco Flau was saying it, they were sort of getting fed up and disappointed. Feels like Cadiz have dropped off to me. Feels like they've really dropped off and actually haven't put enough pressure, Barcelona under enough pressure for the magnitude of game it is for them, for how massive this is. For the scalp they might be able to take tonight, I would have thought Cadiz would have been really putting Barca under. And actually, after the 15th, 20th minute, they just sort of dropped off. That goal was not coming for Barca because Barca weren't getting loads and loads of chances. Yeah. But it's fair enough that Barca got it because Cadiz weren't putting Barca under enough pressure themselves. And after it's gone in, Cadiz have sort of been like, well, there we are then. We've, we've almost sealed our own fate there. Should have been the second from Fermin Lopez. 1 0, though. Very nothing cool. done. We were 1 0 up against PSG, of course, half time. And within, in the, by the 50th minute, it was 2 1 to PSG. I've got no doubt in my mind that Cadiz will come out in this game. They will start to put Barca under pressure. I'd expect, especially yeah. set pieces, corners. Barca mm. are going to have to do some defending. They're going to have to dig in. But they've controlled the game well so far. It hasn't been an entertaining game in that regard with loads of chances but they've controlled it well they've done their job 
got a very good opening goal through Jao Felix, and they'll be content at half time. Cadiz won't be. The important thing, uh, of course, tonight is the, the good result, Jamie. What do you think? Do you agree with Pablo? Do you feel like Cadiz have maybe kind of been demoralized after this goal? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, at the first sort of 10, 15 minutes, Cadiz kind of came out looking fired up for it. And I thought, okay, mm. you know, Barca are going to have a rough time of it. Maybe we're going to see a good match here. And, and Barca stuck to their game, as Xavi always asked them to do. They moved the ball around, they took their time, they worked, you know, patiently building up, building up. And like you say, like, it's like they almost lost interest. Yeah. Yeah, they just sort of switched off, got bored, I don't know. And, uh, and Barca completely capitalized on that, rightly so. And I think the, the result at half time is as it should be. Um, well, I hope they come out swinging after the break. Cadiz, I mean. We're seeing uh, the statistics on our screen here. 66% percent, percent, uh, uh, possession, eight shots for Barca, mm. just the two on target. So 50% uh, uh, efficiency for Football Club Barcelona as they are leading by one goal to nil. There's still a whole lot of action coming your way, of course, an entire second half, as well as all of the post-match reactions. So don't touch that dial, but we are gonna take a quick break and we'll be right back after this message. Cuando empiezo en, en mis orígenes, sí que tenía ese sueño de poder ser jugador de fútbol, pero no me imaginaba que, que podía llegar a, a un equipo top top como, como el Barça. Voy al millor para aquest club. Y el, el sento, el sento, me han fet ser així casa. A casa todos son culés y sigui a dins del club o fuera, estaré remant siempre para que todo vaya bien. Gracias, patrocinadores. Un aplauso también para ellos. 
and basketball, all of the sections on a daily basis, and of course, in all three. <laughs> Barça PSG, aquesta setmana també el Barça Live en català i en castell. Armènia, veurem aquesta feina al futur. Tu que canta... Perfecte, si ja està bé, jo estic bé. Pensia, una va... Té l'aplicació, president? Ara és una de la Barça, crec que la gent disfrutarà, només anar-li... L'enhorabona a tots, al Preci, al club, a tots els que han fet possible aquesta plataforma que per mi serà extraordinària pels fulers. Serà un autèntic vici. Welcome back to Barça Live. The first half is uh, over. If you guys could maybe turn off the microphone in the control room. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to keep going on here. Welcome back to Barça Live. Barça leading by one goal to nil. The goal being scored by Joao Félix. The number 14 coming with the goods and then what kind of way as well. It was a bicycle kick that allowed Barça to take the lead. I'm here joined by Pablo and Jamie Coles. Boys, it's been a, a first half that hasn't seen a lot of chances. We have managed to keep Cadiz quiet as well. However, what do you think Xavi will be saying to his, uh, uh, his team in the locker room? Jamie. I mean, the lack of action has been made up for by that goal. Like, what a way of, of putting Barca on the scoreboard with that bicycle kick from Jao Felix. Um, we celebrated it, rightly so. <laughs> passionately here. Uh, I, I think, you know, we've said it repeatedly throughout the match, a cagey affair, a cagey affair. And I think it's understandable, you know, Cadiz came out fighting. They should have left it all on the pitch. I don't think they have. They've, they've let me down in that sense. Um, you said they, they'd go into the break kind of mm, yeah. not very happy with the performance. And I, I think you're right. And I'm not very happy with everyone. I, I, I want to see, see a more. match. I want to see some football, you know, and mm. I want to fight. And, I, and the team at that point, at that stage, where they are in the table, getting a chance with a packed out stadium. We, we saw yeah. the atmosphere outside the stadium. To go up against Barca, in a moment for Barca that's also very complicated, Xavi switched things around. They, they should have pounced on that and given us a bit of a show today. And I don't think they have. And Jao Felix really did, so. Pablo, what do you think? Do you think uh, Xavi is happy with uh, what he's seen from his team so far? Do you think mm -hmm. that he maybe, mm, what do you think he'll be saying yeah. to them right now? Is the, the result the important thing tonight? I think the result is the important thing tonight. I, I, I do think that. I think really Barca are here to win and, and, and get out of here, really, and, and, yeah. and focus on that big week coming up against P PSG and then Real Madrid in the Classico. And of course, for that Classico to be even you know, somewhat important, we have to win tonight. So, of course, you know, I think he'll be all, all focused will be on the result. I think he'll be wary because we've said a lot of times that Cadiz haven't been good. They haven't been. They've sort of dropped off after the 10th, 15th minute. But they're going to come out, I think, fighting. I don't know if immediately like PSG did, but I think at some point they will, as long as it remains within 1-0. If Barca get the second goal, I think we really we can kill the game quite quickly in, in all truth. But I think Xavi will be wary and telling his players, remember what happened midweek. Because mm. we felt really good at half-time midweek against PSG, mm. by the way. Really good. And I remember I was thinking, Barca just need this second goal now because we've got PSG here. 50th minute, it was 2-1 to PSG. And that is football. That can happen. And I think Cadiz, you mentioned the big crowd. Let's see if they ever do wake up and they have to deliver for that crowd. So that I'd, I'd back them to at least at some point do that. But if Barca can keep control, keep possession, keep them at arm's length, then they'll be okay. So, you, I mean, you did mention that you feel that they look kind of dejected at some point, mm. that they were kind of checked out of the game. Do you think they still have it in there? I'm talking about Cadiz, of course, to remontar, to come back from this uh, uh, scoreline. Yeah, I mm. think because they'll get in a half-time and say, guys, we know he dropped off there. We know that wasn't good enough. Mm. But look at the score. It's only 1-0. In, in all fairness, they did a good job up until yeah. that goal. Yeah. I mean, what, what do you think, where do you think Xavi will want to see improvements from his team? Yeah, exactly. They were probably thinking, to be fair, as 
Barca can say they've got us at arm's length, we're probably saying we've got Barca at arm's length, yeah. is what they would have been saying. You know, they're not exactly threatening us massively. So Xavi, I think, would also be asking for a step up from his players, mm. just because we've got the one nil from a, a almost like a freak, you know, bicycle kick in the penalty area from a corner. It doesn't mean like ah, you know, job done. What you know, fantastic half of football. It still means there's a lot of work to do. So Xavi, I still think we knocking on his players saying we have to pick it up too. But I think because it's only one nil, Caddy will be buoyed by that, and they'll say, guys, we know we haven't been good enough in that last 25, 30 minutes, but we've got a big chance this game to still make something happen of it. I mean, we, we know that, of course, Jamie, the Barca way is not now to come out in the second half to protect this result, but, of course, to continue and look for that second one. Sure, and I think Xavi will ask for, for that intensity sort of transitioning into the final third because they're, they're looking solid at the back. They're sort of moving the ball out well, moving it around slowly and steady. They've recovered the ball deep in a couple of occasions and turned that into opportunities, but I, th I think he's going to be asking for a bit more kind of intensity there and, and like you say, for them to step up and, mm. and sort of... And I, I do think, like, another goal early on in this second half will absolutely seal the deal. And I think, you know, we mentioned Cali looking a little bit dejected. We saw Fermin have a, a what was very nearly a goal for, yeah. you know, by millimetres. And, and I do worry that, like, I do worry for the, for the good of the match that Cadiz have maybe accepted this result for Barca, of course, that's, that, that would be ideal. Yeah. I do think a second goal sort of in the, in the early stage of the second half would very much seal the deal. People, you've heard from the two experts here, our panel. What can we expect from the second half? Why don't we ask uh, Mark Brau as well, who's, of course, over in the Nuevo Mirandilla. Let's connect with our pitch side reporter and see what he thinks of the first half, but also what we can expect in the second. Mark, how are your eardrums, my friend, after this very loud first half that you described to us? I, have, I, I want to apologize to everyone who's watching us. Uh, usually I shout, but today I shout more due to this thing. I, I don't know, Paul, if you can give me an image. So this, this small thing, small thing, it's like going to the hell this going till that is uh, shouting a lot uh, this loud speaker that makes me crazy to me and also paul uh, that uh, i don't think that paul listened to me at all uh, until the end of the of the game uh, as you can see me i have the beep put inside because the league told me they have to leave it it's like the the cadet place but this is the credential that i have but let me what i have behind it's like okay it's the other part <laughs> it's, the, it's the sound that makes me crazy. This is, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, uh, what I say, this this thing, it's making me crazy. So let's do the things that uh, uh, matter to the, to the Barca fans. Uh, for the moment, I can say that in the pits are all the Barca players inside. For the moment, there's no substitutions. Remember that we have important players in the bench, like uh, Gundogan, for example, like Rafinha, like Lamin Jamal. But for the moment, Xavi is not making substitutions. That thing that Barca is growing up during the game. Uh, at first, it's quite a bit difficult because Sky make a high pressure. But after the goal, Barca is controlling the game. You talk about this uh, incredible action made that for me that was clear by the line for uh, the defenders of Cadiz. So we expect that in the second half, Barca scored the second goal. And uh, maybe, maybe we can have uh, a more quiet final of the game. But remember that uh, Cadiz is playing uh, to be outside. Of the of the positions that gave me him to the second division, so we expect a high pressure for Cadiz in the second half. The news are this: that the Barca players are in the pitch right now. I can see all the Barca players. Let me count them: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eleven. For the moment, Cadiz players are not in the field, so we have to wait. Okay, well, thank you, Mark. Uh, some quick counting there by our pitch side reporter, Mark Brau. And uh, while we await for Cadiz to take to the field. What do you think we can expect for the second half? Pablo, let's start with you. I think Mark accurately said the fact that, hey, we still need to keep in mind that Cadiz are playing for their lives here. Still sitting in 18th, they want to get out of the relegation zone. Yeah, of course. It's what we've been repeating. You know, Barca aren't just going to be able to rock up in this second half and just have things all easy. You know, you'd expect there'll come a point in the game if it stays at 1-0 where Cadiz come and attack Barca. And they'll put Barca under pressure and Barca are then going to have to be really resolute defensively. So... From a Barca point of view, they have to keep their heads focused. You know, this would in a way be one of those easy games to drop off in because you've almost had it so easy for that last half an hour in the first half where you've just been knocking it about. Yeah. You've got your goal. You're very calm. You should have had your second and we'll all go home happy. And then Cadiz can hit you. This is La Liga, you know. This isn't, this isn't just any joke. So we need to really keep our heads on here. That would have been the message from Xavi. Not just keep the level, raise it from the first half, in my opinion. Well, there you go. The referee has whistled uh, for the second half to start. Barca 
have done the honors with the kickoff and have played it deep into the heart of Cadiz half as uh, they now regain possession and in search to double the lead. There again, a reminder for those of you, if you're just joining us, Barca leading by one goal to nil. Beautiful goal scored by Joao Felix. It was a bicycle kick, and we went over all of the historic bicycle kicks uh, that Barca have scored in their illustrious history. And that is a reminder for all of you to make sure that you download the Barca One app to make sure you, know, you can watch all of the historic games and see the bicycle kicks for yourself from Rivaldo to Ronaldinho to Luis Suarez and now Joao Felix as well uh, able to uh, join that illustrious list of bicycle kick scorers. Jamie, you want to say something? News, Diego. Oh, yes. We have news, guys. We have we have three players warming up. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but yes. there's Pedri, Kunde, and Lamin Yamal. So I said that there are important players in the bench that we didn't expect them to play. But uh, Xavi, of course, is thinking that the game, of course, is not end. So Kunde, Pedri, and Lamin Yamal are warming up. Okay, thank you for that, Mark. A little bit of breaking news early at the top of uh, the second half. Already sending three players to warm up. Lamin, uh, Yamal, Kunde, and Pedri. Jamie, you wanted to make a point earlier. <laughs> I was I was trying to find it and I found it. There's a top five bicycle kick video on ah. Barca One, and there was one that was in, I, it was in my memory, possibly because I edited it. I don't really remember, but <laughs> or, or I, I was Carlos Pujol, birthday boy, scored a bicycle kick against Tenerife in 2002. All oh, right. Wow. Wow. Mark, did you hear that? <laughs> Jamie just uh, threw an amazing stat our way or <laughs> un dato, a, a fact. <laughs> Carles Puyol, 2002, yeah. scored a bicycle kick against, you said? Tenerife. Tenerife. Yeah, Tenerife. Tenerife. Tenerife, yeah, yeah. Tenerife, a uh, day that uh, Patrick Kluivert scored four goals, a poker for him. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Mark just had to up it up a notch. He just had to out. I'm not, like, I'm not even going to go through the third said, He said, Jamie, I see your yeah. stat and I raise you a poker. Four goals by Petr. Yeah. And, and I can give you an extra stat. The first goal was scored by... David Charco's own goal was the first one. So it's the six goals scored by Barca oh, to Tenerife. Thank you, thank you so much. Un aplauso. Pablo. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm coming. <laughs> Smackdown. Tasca, Tasca. Yes. I'm coming, I'm coming. Eh? Uh, I have to say after that Pablo, Pablo, pa Pablo wasn't born that year, maybe. So it's impossible for <laughs> him to, well, to have memories well, of this bicycle kick scored by Puyol. <laughs> Defends, I'm probably. What month of the year was it? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Ooh. Um, that's, a, that's a stat for Mark. <laughs> After the program, go find the highlights from uh, Barca Tenerife 2002. That's right. That's right. You can check it all out on Barca <laughs> 1, all of the highlights and uh, the videos of the games in full. All for you at your disposal on Barca 1 for free. For free. In the meantime, Barca on the ball. Hector Ford going now in the middle. Trying to find an opening, but uh, we're seeing that Cadiz are quick to close down any passing lanes yep. at this point. Oh. Maybe now, oh, unfortunate. Fermin Lopez was unable to get a touch to that. Otherwise, he would have been in a dangerous position indeed to uh, let it rip on Ledesma's goal. As Cadiz wastes this possession completely, Barca are happy to pick that up. Mm. They say thank you as they build up from the back as well. Oh, it looks like Ramos might be uh, in a bit of pain. We'll have to see if the Cadiz forward will be able to continue or not. But we're seeing uh, Chris Ramos just grabbing to his, uh, his uh, what is that area here? His hip area. So we might see a, a premature substitution for the home side take place if, uh, in the case he's unable to continue. Barça, though, won't uh, mind that. Is if not want a corner kick, it's a goal kick. Joao Felix I'll, I'll getting a touch. I'll, eh? tell, I'll tell you what, Diego, it's only five yeah. minutes into the second half, but well, Cuddy still looked quite dejected. Energetic. De de dejected. Oh, that dejected. That long ball went out there Felix. that Kubarsi e easily picked up. So, sorry, Mark. A long ball up there that Kubarsi e easily picked oh, up, oh. and, they, and they, they just looked, oh, you know, another ball given away. I know we, we question whether 
you know, when would the, would the Cadiz resurgence come? If, if, if it comes, it hasn't come in the opening five minutes of the second half. They still look frustrated up there as of now, not able to keep possession for long enough. No, and actually Barca seemed like they, they carried the same intensity yeah. out of the yeah. first half into the second half. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. So, who would you like to see in the second half? Pedro, well, it Levin, looks like... Kunde. We may see all three, but <laughs> go on, because Chris it, Ramos says... Yes, oh. it looks like uh, Ramos uh, will not be able to continue. We saw yeah, signs to, earlier. No, there's, but it, it won't be... It won't be uh, the only substitution because there are more Cardiff players going to the bench but I don't know if they're changing the players who are warming up or they're going to enter one no there's only one substitution yeah definitely yeah it's Maxi Gomez uh, take care uh, we have to be care of this player because Maxi Gomez uh, yes. scored a lot of goals against Barca when mm -hmm. he played with Celta and also when he played with Valencia That's so right. we have to be careful with this uh, Uruguayan player, a great player, maybe we, we expected in the past that he can arrive to a, a, a bigger team or, or, or teams are playing in Europe, but Maxi Gomez is quite dangerous and Barca knows it all. That's right, Mark. Uh, Maxi Gomez, an old foe, much like uh, Juanmi, I suppose you could say, but uh, a familiar foe for Football Club Barcelona and uh, has found indeed the back of the net on. Uh, well, more occasions than any other of the Cadiz players. As you rightly said, though, Mark, his time at Cadiz has been far from impressive. Uh, he's now coming back from injury. Maybe uh, a bit of a surprise addition here as uh, he's uh, kind of had to force his way in to, this, to the uh, 11 that's out on the field for Pele Pellegrino's side as uh, Chris Ramos is unable to continue. But all eyes now set on the former Valencia and uh, Celta de Vigo player Maxi Gomez, who's, uh, as I mentioned, and, and Mark as well, scored uh, a handful of goals against Barca. If I, to throw a stat your way, Mark, I think it was five goals, if I'm not mistaken, in total, that he has scored against Barca. Yeah, two with Celta and three with uh, Valencia. Yeah, it's fine. Barca now attacking from the Ooh, left yeah. side. In comes a cross. It was a good cross, but... A good clearance as well by the Cadiz defenders as uh, they are trying to transition into offense. Hector Ford clearing that one away though, stopping the quick transition as Barca's players are able to uh, settle in their defensive formation. Now, we saw the first substitute for uh, Cadiz, as I said, a premature one, a forced one. Who do you think will be the first sub for Barca? There's a question for the chat. Why don't you let us know as uh, oh, Barca need to be careful, and it's the equalizer. And it's called for offside. It's offside, it's, it's offside. 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 It's going to be tight, I think. going to be tight. We'll you think it'll be tight? Did clear. it look tight for you, <laughs> Mark? I think that was the right call we're seeing there. Absolutely way. clear for me. Clear, clear, clear. No I doubt checking, about it. But it's very, very, very clear. Very clear. I don't know why, I don't know why flying, but I thought it was going to be tight. <laughs> <laughs> On the replay, he's like yards and yards. Well, he, looks so, he looks so confident as well, the way he's celebrating here. I don't here. know what it was. I think it was just the way it came in. I thought, I thought we had players just a bit closer to him, but clearly offside. Yeah. Clearly offside, no doubt about it. A warning shot, though, maybe. Mm. By a the warn side. Absolute warning, Jamie, yes. Uh, without a doubt, a warning for Barca to stay focused and concentrated and compact in the back as well, but a lovely offside trap set there. As uh, the fans, the Cali fans, will be disappointed. But uh, there was absolutely no doubt yeah, about that. I, I, I swear they're doing it. I swear they're doing it. Uh, what I want to say before, uh, it's like, uh, I see also an incredible start by Joe Felix. It's the season he scored more goals since he arrived in Spain. So, uh, it, it, I think it's something that we have to analyze. But uh, Joe Felix scored goals in, in with Atletico de Madrid. But in a season that he's not playing always from the beginning, yeah. especially in the last month, coming from the he's bench. coming more for the bench. I mm -hmm. think it's quite good to explain the, the way that he's adapting for the team in the first uh, season remember that he arrived the last day or one of the last days of the transfer market at the when we play against Cadiz in August he was an Atletico player 
and in less games than other ones he arrived to the 10 goals is the third top scorer this season that is impressive isn't it i mean for a player that has come so late i mean at the stroke of halftime literally before the transfer window closed joao felix uh, joined the squad and as mark rightly pointed out many times has to come in uh, from the bench to uh, position himself as the third top goal scorer for Barca is uh, quite an impressive feat to say the least. Very, very much so. And I think people maybe wondered what would happen, you know, with, with his loan move this season, João Felix. I mean, we wondered if Laminia Mal was going to come on there. I think he's actually just going to warm up. I think he was just a little bit. Was, was, was he too hot right there, maybe? Yeah, I think he was. Yeah, he, was. he had his. Uh... <laughs> Yeah. The match shirt on, he changed back to his training shirt. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, I'm not, not coming on just yet. I'm sure Mark will inform us when yeah, the corner for Cali is getting but... cleared. Sorry, Pablo. Uh, things heating up a little bit in the Barca box as uh, Cali now having back to back corners and chances. In comes another cross, it's whipped and uh, mm. into the box as that header went wide to the relief of Opules. But uh, well, we can definitely say that Cali are. Upping the ante here at the start, uh, at the start of the second half. We're already an, an, an hour into the game, but uh, the second half it's looking like Cadiz had the clear intention of leveling the score. Warning signs, I'd call them. Warning yes. signs for Barca, definitely. I mean, I think we said it at halftime. Cadiz probably weren't just weren't just going to let this one fizzle out. They're starting to come at Barca. Barca are going to have to respond here. That's a good piece of tracking back from Sergio Alberto to clear that ball. And Xavi might have to move the bench a little bit and see, you know, who, he, who, he, who he's got available to him because, you know, yeah, it looks like we were just saying maybe they hadn't come out strong here. They come again. Oh, Barca need to be careful here. Cadiz having the ball more than... Uh, uh, too much for comfort, let's yeah. say. These are uh, some very intense minutes from the Andalusian side indeed. Great action, great action made by Vitor Roque, by Tigrino. It was a, a long ball to him, alone in front of the defense of Cadiz. And it's like an action very, very, uh, very well done by Tigrino. As you can see in the matches, guys, not yep. in Barca 1, but yes, uh, you in the in Barca studios, it's going to be the three substitutions at the same time. Kunde, Pedri, and Lamin Jamal. So it's one substitution per line, one defender, one midfielder, and one forward. So uh, let's gonna play if you want. Uh, which players can be substituted? Let's see. I mean, uh, it'll be. I'm gonna go for Hector Ford for Kunde. I'm gonna say. Mm, Sure. Oh, that's a beautiful action here. This oh. is a good chance for Barca to make it oh, too. Aye. Ferran Torres getting his shot blocked. Puts in another cross though to the far post. No. As uh, none of the Barca players are able to connect with that pass. But I'm, I think, yeah, I'm gonna go. Listen, Ferran Torres will come off for Lamin Yamal. Uh, Hector Ford for Kunde, and who was the third? Pedri. 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 Uh, Sergio Roberto. That'd be really interesting. Oh, it's lovely. Story, I mean, look at that. Look at Joao Felix. He's feeling himself today. <laughs> Love it. It's, it's going to be interesting just because Xavi's got two two options. He goes with the changes. Mm. Does does he want? Does he rest people who he thinks have played too much lately? Right. Or, or does he actually just make the change that he thinks? Is you best, think it could be Pau Cubarsi coming off, for example? Yeah, especially with the week ahead. Exactly. You know, it's it's he's got to be. That's got to be really playing on his yeah. mind, surely. Yeah. Um, so that, I, I had the same doubt. I was thinking, like, yeah. Kunde. He could come on for Kuba, oh, but he could boys. also replace Here's another good Ford. chance mm. for Cadiz as he's left fully unmarked. Oh, he's got the time oh, and the oh, space oh, to oh. put in a dangerous cross, and the Cadiz players want a handball. Oh, I don't know, Mark, if you were able to see that. We didn't really no, see. No, I'm just in the other goal. Okay. I'm just behind the other goal. But I think it's not, uh, because the uh, referee is quite uh, listen to the bar. Uh, but I think there's no, there's no handball. No handball, it well seems. No, indeed, okay. Mark. As uh, Victor Roque is trying to get to that ball, trying to beat not one but two Cadiz defenders. In the end, it's Cadiz that get away with the ball. The Desma opting for safety first. Yeah. Let's take a look at the replay here. Well, there was a touch by, uh, is it Hector Ford or Pau Cubarsi? But no intention to play the ball with the hand. So the referee of 
rightfully allowed play to continue. But things heating up, boys. Yeah. Things heating Let's up. Let's go with the substitution, and, guys. Yeah, an hour. Let's go. We're Let's at go the hour mark. Oscar Hernandez was very insisting. No, uh, Oscar Hernandez is very angry. He's very mm. angry with the fourth referee. Yeah. He only has to do one thing in the game. Just this, the only thing that he has to do, and he's not saying anything to the referee. I can understand uh, Oscar Hernandez annoying. The fourth referee only has to do one thing. But this is the level that we have put, here. Put up the okay, sign. So for the moment, there's no substitutions. Yeah. All right, we're going to have to wait a little bit longer for the substitutions. But Oscar Hernandez, understandably, getting very frustrated with the linesman indeed as they're looking to uh, put in not one, not two, but three pairs of fresh legs. Barca, in I the mean, meantime. Continue Sergio Roberto is going to be suspended. He is a shot! It's oh. in that one, flying wide. Joao Felix nearly getting his brace. It was a beautiful cross by Ferran Torres to find the Portuguese forward once more and taking it in stride as well with the very first touch. Joao Felix nearly making it 2-0 for Football Club Barcelona as now we are getting the three substitutions. Jules Kunde, Lamine, yeah. Yamal Christensen. and Pedri. Go on. Yeah. Mark. For Christensen, yeah. Vitor Roque on Christensen, Vitor Roque and yeah. Hector Ford. Oh, yeah. So Kunde is uh, playing. Uh, let me check the positions because Kunde is putting as a center back. Okay. So it as a forward, as you can see, Lamin Yamal is going to the right wing. Yeah. Ferran Torres is putting in the nine position in the striker. Yeah. But let me help with the right back position. Sergio Roberto. Has to no? be must be, must be. Sergio Roberto, yeah. Sergio Roberto. With Pedri, Fermin and Oriol Romeo in the midfield, yeah. Uh, Oriol Romeo uh, is continuing with holding midfielder, attacking midfielders for Fermin and Pedri. And yes, Sergio Roberto is going uh, in the right back position. Remember that Christensen well, is one of the players who has four yellow cards, so That's right. we are safe. Christensen mm. will be able to play the classical. Good, good, good. Mm. Strategic substitutions then, making sure that uh, Xavi has his players available for the big match coming up next week. But before we focus on that, business still needs to be taken care of over here in Nuevo Mirandilla. Barça 1, Cadiz 0. The goal scorer, Joao Félix, nearly making it 2 0 after an excellent pass from Ferran Torres. I think there were substitutions from Xavi, not only because of the way the game was going well. I think he's seen Cadiz have woken up now. We can all see that they've woken up. Mm -hmm. They're putting Barca under pressure. They're coming close from set pieces. And Xavi's had enough. And I think that's why Oscar was furious that he couldn't make a triple change. At that point, because at the time where he wanted to make it, Cadiz were, you know, building up a lot of pressure. I think he just wanted to cut the spread a little bit. Xavi <laughs> clearly scored down the other end there. Nah. But I think also looking at the players he's brought on or he's brought off, I mean, one, he's brought on a lot of strong players off the bench, including Kunde, yeah. who's, you know, suspended if he, if, he, um, if, he, if he gets a yellow card. But also the players he's brought off, he's not rested. Kovarsi, like we were maybe saying, you know, um, you know he's, he's kept him out there because I think he realises this game is still in a bit of like a... It's in a position of jeopardy still. And he's making sure that, you know, Barca wrap up the, these three points before he starts maybe thinking about next week. This is still an important game for Barca. And those substitutions for me... Are, are those of a man who still wants to, you know, make sure that he gets these three points. Here's what oh, I mean. Oh, this is lovely. Oh, surely that'll be oh, a card, wow. ref. Surely that's a yellow card. Yeah, Indeed, it is. Card. Yeah, it's, it is. It is, it is. It's a clear yellow card. Uh, this action to, to Fermin. Clear yellow card for number 15, Javi Hernandez. And we have three more players warming up. Only two of them can enter in the field. They are Mark Gill, Marc Casado, two La Masia players, and Rafinha, the MVP of uh, last European night. So I think that Rafinha only will enter if the score uh, is different. Oh. Well, we have to wait and see, Mark. In the meantime, Barca are trying to look for that second goal, trying to reply to some very good minutes, some serious minutes from the home side. Mm. Cadiz putting Barca a little bit up against the ropes, but Barca trying to respond here and uh, increase the goal deficit. 1-0 remains at the moment we saw uh, Javi Hernandez Jamie's favorite player from <laughs> the Cadiz side I came here tonight with one joke <laughs> yeah. what more do you want from me Diego <laughs> <laughs> 
It was a shocker, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Barca pushing forward now. A little lob over to the defensive line, and that is a decent first touch by uh, Ferran Torres, but he's called for offside. Offside. Tiburon. I think it's a good moment for Barca to score the second goal. Uh, that was a good moment, of yeah. Of course. Uh, always it's a moment to score the goal, <laughs> but now the Cadiz has lose, has, no, but Cadiz has lost a little bit the, the way that he showed in the beginning of the second half, and I think it's a good way just to, to put the second uh, goal in the in the scoreboard mm. and uh, try to try to rest a little bit from the next game against Paris Saint Germain. Mm. What I, we can say we can say at all that there are some players that won't play today. For example, Kundo and Araujo yes. are not doing anything in the bench, so mm. they don't warming up. So I think that those players uh, won't play at all. Yeah, I think all uh, we concur. I mean, we would want these players, key players, of course, to uh, get some much deserved rest. Gundogan, I mean. The most used player by far under Xavi Hernandez has played all the games. But no offside here. Again, Barca need to be careful. That's a slide tackle. The referee will wave it off, meaning it'll be, I think, a goal kick for Barca in the end. The fans uh, felt that Isaac was maybe manhandled a little bit too roughly in this. Uh, was it? Is it? Actually, offside? offside was it flag for offside? No, it was flag for offside. It's was tight. it? It's, it's tight though. I thought Kubarsi got the ball anyway on that tackle. Yeah. I could be utterly wrong again, like I was on the offside, but mm. yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I think they both almost get a bit of the ball there. I'm not sure that would have been given as a. Oh, I mean, I don't know. It's a tight one. It's a tight one. It's a tight one. I think he was just offside anyway. And we've had confirmed yeah. that he was just offside, so. So Pau Kubarsi, Ruben Alcaraz, Sergio <laughs> Roberto, and Javi Hernandez. It's uh, two apiece. When it comes to yellow cards, two for each team. You see in there, in the 46-minute so little scuffle between the news. two players. Yes. I, I, so I have, I have some news. Uh, I said that uh, Gundogan and Araujo won't play uh, for sure. Oh, no. I don't know if there's something wrong uh, of our the, one of our defenders, because uh, Ronald Araujo is going to warm up. It's not. It, it, it doesn't have to be very quickly, but uh, I say that Mark Gill is going back to the bench, and Araujo is beginning to to warming up. He's okay. warming up right now. It's going to the position with Rafinha and Marc Casado. I don't know if uh, Kubarsi or Kunde has some problems. I hope not. Uh, for the moment, no. For the moment, no. It's not. Uh, Araujo is going to warming up. I will give you some news I have. Okay. Kubarsi does have that Thanks yellow Thanks for that update, Mark. Interesting. Sergio Roberto have the yellow card as well. Also, I get Xavi maybe thinking PSG and Real Madrid coming up. Yeah. You think that's you think it's just precautionary? Yeah. Um, I, I just because at the moment we, we might in a minute see an image of Sergio Roberto or someone yeah. limping, but mm. at the moment, yeah, you just imagine. I think I saw Sergio as obviously on a yellow and he just went into a challenge with someone again. You're just thinking in the back of your mind, careful, you know. I thought as well when you know, he went sliding in the penalty yes. area there and yes. it's like on that one yellow card. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. don't see any injured player in Barcelona. No injuries, I don't see okay. Any, uh, or clear injury. Uh, it has to be, I don't know if somebody can be a little bit uh, with some problems, but it has to be more the yellow card uh, that could actually have. Great action by Joe Felix, guys. Here we go, Joao Felix switching it over to Lamine Yamal. Lamine Yamal in his favorite position, 101, take it into his left foot, back to his right. As uh, again, the crowd are trying to claim a handball. It's a one-two touch between Lamine Yamal and Fermin Lopez. Lamine will try to take it. This shot oh. flying uh, this is what across the goal line. Great. Time. Lamine Yamal coming to life here. No, it's ball for Barca. What is the? It's ball for Barca. Why the referee is giving the ball to Cadiz? Conor Ledesma touched the ball clearly. Let's see. Did he? You couldn't see it here. What do they have in the face? They have eyes or not? Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> A clear. <laughs> but Mark Bryce <Brown's> furious. <laughs> Mark, it's, you're it's gonna a, walk away. Yeah, it's. It, uh, I, I, well, I, I don't. I don't want to say nothing about this. <laughs> we are winning today, so this is a you family know program. About this, so this is this is all gone downhill yeah. for Mark Brown since he found out there was churros and chocolate outside. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, did. I prefer oh. talking about churros and chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But not Spanish, because Anthony Taylor was terrible last uh, Wednesday, so... Well. <laughs> I would love some churros and chocolate. There I was right going to say, can we send out a producer and <laughs> and get some churros in here? All the churros. Chance. Remember the good old days when there was an abundance of food here on the, <laughs> the Barça Live Plateau. I think I got here in the garlic era. I think it was actually the, the, they tried to start it off this this uh, season with some popcorn as well, and it was okay. uh, our friend Spencer Siegel that made a mess of it. That's right. You know, so we have him to thank, Jamie, that uh, we're. We have Again, the, sans popcorn. Just added to the long list of things we have him to thank for. <laughs> <laughs> Ter Stegen passing it down the middle. It would be wonderful to see Barca get the second here as we've passed the 70th minute mark. Who's going to get it? Who will get who it? Would you... Let's uh, hear from the chat as well, Jamie. Well, it's maybe a good uh, time to ask our chat as well. Who do you think will score the 2-0? Will there be a 2-0 or will it end in the 1-0 win for Barca? And if you do think there will be a second, who is going to score it? I'm, uh, I'm going to put my money on uh, La Mina Mal for the 2-0. Oh, he didn't. Oh, here it is. Barca now getting in a good position to at least fire a shot. And it's on the post. Oh, Joao Felix. Once again, getting ever so close to getting the second goal for Barca. He wants to get his brace. I'm going to put my money on Joao Felix. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness, oh, the Portuguese. Oh, was that offside? It was offside. It was offside. Yeah. I'll tell you why it's yeah, but I don't know one. if the offside is, is by Joao Felix or Fermin. I think I it's Joao. Yeah. One it's of a, this has to be offside. It's a, Joao, yeah. it's a frustrating one because on the initial ball through, if Ferran didn't touch it, Joao Felix was not only in, he wasn't offside either. And yeah. then by the time Ferran has intercepted the ball and then plays it through to Jao, he was offside. It's a great chance for the second off of Arsenal. I mean, Jao Felix did well to make something of it anyway, but if he'd scored that one off the post, would have would have been called offside. Yes. But great chance for Barca if Ferran he must not have known or got the call from Felix behind him. Frustrating one. And he looks as fired up as any of the front three that, to get that next goal, right? Yeah. yeah. And to be fair, Jim, I think we were looking at someone from the front three to like light up this game. We were probably wrong not to mention him because he has been the one I feel that's taken the game by the scruff of the neck a little bit where you sort of think when Joao Felix gets the ball, something's going to happen. And he's yeah. been that sort of game for him. And I know he's that sort of player, but, you know, he's turned up tonight in all fairness. Well, again, I would love to hear from the chat. Do you think more goals will be scored? We, of course, remember that last season, all four goals that Barca managed to score uh, against Cadiz were all came in the second half. Don't forget that you can watch that game on Barca 1. In fact, you can watch all of the Barca games for free on the Barca 1 platform. Uh, make sure that you download Barca 1, download the app, access it through the website as well. You've got so many games at your disposal, not just games, you've got fantastic documentaries, the album, uh, Origins episode we just launched recently, the Araujo uh, Origins, the Chabi one as well, and there are many more in the making. Beautiful, beautiful documentaries about your favorite Barca players. It's all accessible for free. I'm going to say that one more time, for free. I'm There's kidding. no excuses. Jamie, it is for free, my friend. For free. Barca won. Download the app. Get it, get it, get it. It is an absolute must for all Pules around the world. It's your home for all your Barca content. We talked about game shows as well. Uh, uh, Come No Kitchen. Jamie, do you remember a little episode or a little show called Blue and Red by any chance? I've been waiting. You can watch that as well. I've been waiting for you to mention that the whole, the whole night. <laughs> what, a, what a time to have been part of Barca Studios that was. Oh my goodness. Our introduction to Barca Studios. It was the our... first time we worked together. Yes, yes, no, yes. I wanted, I wanted to say that, that you mentioned that Arrojo documentary. It's beautiful is the word. Beautiful. It's absolutely stunning. Yeah. Mm. Um, really, like, and, and the story as well, you know, they take him back to his hometown and meet, see where he grew up and the football clubs that he passed through and, and they hear from like his first coaches. Uh, really, really great documentary. Yeah, I can give you that one, isn't it, to be fair? Really, really good one. I think what a lot of the fans love about Barca 1 is the ability to go and rewatch some of those old games. It's like an archive of all the Barca gold and I've seen like a lot of fans on like, X and stuff talking about that, so that's great to see. Nice. You know, that's really, really good.
good that a lot of the Barca fans can go back and think like, oh, remember that classic game? Now I have it, you know, and that's, that's, that's great for a lot of us. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's um, such a great initiative by the club to come back and come back strong with a platform like Barca One and to uh, make it available for our international audience as well. You can watch everything in all three languages, mm -hmm. Catalan, Spanish and English. So in the case you want to sharpen up your Spanish or Catalan, you've got that option as well. And uh, I would highly recommend signing up and watching the origins of Ronald Araujo because it's a, a masterpiece. Beautiful, beautiful scenes. In the meantime, Cadiz are trying to make things level. There's still uh, just under 15 minutes remaining here in the second half. Barca leading by the one goal to nil. It's a narrow margin. Barca have had the chance to uh, extend the lead. Substitutions. And more substitutions. Mark, tell us. In Cadiz. Yeah, yeah, you have to help me. I'm a little bit uh, <laughs> far away from uh, the way of the okay. substitutions. Okay. We'll Alex wait Fernandez, for graphic confirmation yeah, here. Juanmi and Roger Martí, the uh, ex Levante man. Roger, Darwin Marchis as well. Darwin Marchis, also a uh, familiar foe. Yeah, for Darwin Marchis. David Matisse was one of the main players who scored in that game against Granada. You remember? Correct, exactly. In 2021. Yes. Yeah, one, two. Uh, Aaron was the goalkeeper, the goalkeeper by of Las Palmas last game. And uh, Jorge Molina and David Matisse scored the goals three years ago. One of the mm, worst mm, nights of my life. <laughs> uh, not only for losing the game, because remember that was in COVID time. Uh, without pub, uh, fans in the stands, it was uh, quite weird, that game, and I I'm absolutely sure that that game with uh, Barca fans... Well, Mark, in the meantime, be, we've seen that uh, Marc-André Ter Stegen, your, your yeah. tocayo, your uh, namesake. namesake, has also picked up a, a yellow card, but it kind of slipped me, uh, yeah. slipped my how attention. Quickly, as how quickly received the yellow card? Ter Stegen, remember how many goalkeepers uh, at Camp Nou and, and Montjuic are losing time and how quickly yeah. had uh, the yellow card Ter Stegen. <laughs> and Rafinha is going to enter. Has oh. to be the fourth substitution. So the MVP of European Night in Paris will enter in the field. Ay, Cadiz pressing forward there. Cross again, a dangerous one into the Barca box. The clearance. Preventing Sobrino from getting his head to it. As, uh, Darwin making his presence felt by uh, sending another warning shot into the penalty area of Fubu Club Barcelona. These are good minutes now for Cadiz. Yeah. Be careful. Barca defenders need to stay aware here. Ah, it's a shot and it's an oh. excellent save. Wow. My goodness, Mark Andre to Stegen with an absolute goal stopper of a save. Preventing Cadiz from getting the equalizer. What an absolute rocket of a wow. shot. But take a look at that. It's good offense, but better goalkeeping by Mark Andre Ter Stegen. Wow. What a save that is from Ter Stegen. And what a Remember, moment in the game. Four consecutive clean sheets in La Liga. And it, he wants to have the sixth one. Six games on a row in clean sheets once Ter Stegen. Incredible save, mate by our goalkeeper well sama seku he, he must have thought that was that was a done deal i think mm -hmm. the whole, this is it, we're even <laughs> nueva yeah. yeah i mean the whole stadium must have thought that that was that was a handball wasn't it why is not yellow car yeah i'm, just, I'm a surprised with you there mark sama seku the, the substitute the the, two, two of their they're from Canary Islands, the referee and Pedri. And Pedri cannot understand that something that is very clear, Polito mm. Santana is not seeing. But what? Well, Spanish referee. OK, let's go with the substitution. Rafinha is going to enter on Fermin. He's going now. I think we can clap Fermin. I cannot clap in the microphone. But uh, I think uh, it's incredible performance by Fermin. Only the last action in the first half was uh, a, a great option that was can be a goal. And uh, Rafinha is entering in the field. Great game by Aye for me. And Rafinha, the double goalman in uh, Paris, is entering in the pitch. Woo! 
I don't know if for my age, uh, my heart can take uh, a lot more of this, but uh, some intense minutes here. Over in Cadiz. The number six, Hamaseku, the, just the substitute for uh, the home side, making his presence felt as well. As things are heating up here in the final 10 minutes of match day 31, Barca want to hold on to this one goal lead, take away the three points. Ever so important, of course, for Barca to walk away today with the three points to make sure that gap between the league leaders stays and remains at eight. A reminder that next week, in case you've been sleeping under a cave, is El Clásico, folks. <laughs> a chance for us to maybe cut the distance to five points. But uh, let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Let's keep our focus here on these final uh, nine minutes or so. Call it 10 minutes with extra time. Let's hope for another one minute of extra of injury time. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt that that will happen. Yeah. This match is not is really not over yet. No, it's, it is not. We, we were talking kind of the, in the early moments of the second half. of Like, this is a done deal, you know. <laughs> it, we're, we've forgotten to come out of the changing room. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and Barca were really giving it some. And, and all of a sudden... Uh, yeah, they've, they've shaken things up at the home side. Yeah. I'm intrigued about the substitution Xavi just made. Right. Rafinha on for Fermin. I think bringing Rafinha on is a good idea because he brings the energy, he works so hard. Yes. He can help Barca yeah, get the second goal. He's such a top player to bring off the bench. But for Fermin, when you're one up in the game to take out a midfielder who works so hard as well, similar to Rafinha in that way, you've now got four tackles on the pitch, Barca. I think Rafinha will go in almost like a number 10 position. Jal Felix, to be fair, is doing good defensive work. But you now, you've now got Jal Felix, Lamine. I wonder if sort of Ferran. Romeo will drop back. Watch yes. out here, boys. Another shot from outside of the box. This one, Darwin, yeah. unable to keep that shot on target. You've now got your two natural midfielders as Romeo and well Castro. Xavi will that? make the fifth substitution. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Casado. Xavi will make the last change, this last substitution. I think it's Marc Casado. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's Marc Casado who will play the third game of uh, the season, the second in the league. Uh, a holding midfielder, a classic holding midfielder uh, growing up in La Masia. So I don't know, maybe Romeo, remember? Romeo, Romeo, I Romeo guess, yeah. has a yellow car. He can be at the classic or maybe Sergio Roberto, but it, Marquez Ado is a holding midfielder, not a right back. So we have to wait, we have to wait. I think surely it will be for Ferran Torres or João Felix. And then Barca will mm. go back to playing with three natural midfielders and Rafinha will push on a little bit higher. That is an option, <clears throat> of course. Now, at this point in, moment in time, Xavi is more interested in protecting that result, obviously. So, uh, yeah, I think I would concur with you, Pablo. I think uh, he keeps on Orio Romeo and will probably take off uh, one of the forwards. And also thinking, you know, we keep mentioning it, PSG. Yes, what, you, you want to rest one of these players. Another substitution for Pellegrini. Substitution in Cadiz. It's number 33 entering. It's Lucas Pires, a Brazilian. He uh, usually, usually plays as a left back. And it's uh, Lucas Pires uh, by, uh, is replacing uh, Javier Hernandez, the yes. other left back. And for the moment, Marcos Ado is waiting to entrance. Barca is going to uh, kick the. Uh, yeah, he's going to put the ball in play. The ball is back in play, Mark, as you pointed out. That's not moving it up the field. Trying to get, uh, maybe slow down the pace of this game here a little bit, trying to get a good string of passes together. And hone that possession just a little bit, trying to take the sting out of Cadiz, who have certainly uh, kicked it up a notch. And turn it up a gear, trying to find that equalizer. In the case of Barca, it's a matter of, uh, again, saber sufrir un poquito, know how to suffer and protect that result at this point as Xavi awaits to make his uh, fifth and final substitution. Pedri going down after receiving it's a knock to the face and a yellow card being shown. It's Joe Felix. Joe Felix, mm, it's okay. the last uh, substitution. Joe Felix. Who scored the goal, an incredible yeah. goal, bicycle kick, one of the best goals of the season. Joe Felix is clapping the hands to the fans of Barca here in uh, Nuevo Mirandilla. I will clap also. Incredible performance by Joe Felix. Maybe it's not one of the most beautiful ones, but uh, he touches the ball when Barca needed. He scored the goal, an incredible goal, replaced by Marc Asado. 
And uh, we have to take a look what will be the positions now with Rafinha, Ferran and Lamin, yes. And uh, Marc Casado and Oriol Romero Pedro in the midfield. Yeah, exactly. Good call, Pablo. Mm. And uh, the logical decision, of course, at this point yeah. in time, 85th yeah. minute, bring on another midfielder. It was interesting that he brought on Rafinha for Fermin and then almost two minutes later thought, let me put a third <laughs> midfielder in there again. Um, yeah, maybe miscommunication between the, the Hernandez brothers. Potentially, <laughs> potentially, because it was very quick after, wasn't it? Yeah. You see, it's interesting as well, looking at the statistics here, still the three shots on target for Gadi, two shots for Barca. Reminder that uh, we finished the first half with two shots of Barca on goal as well. So in the second half, for all of the good chances that Barca have had, it still remains with, uh, it would seem, with the two shots on target. Right, so well. Now a little bit of space for Pedri and time to find his teammates as they'll be happy to knock that ball around. Trying to create a, a bit of a rondo here. Again, Barca opting for safety first. Passing that ball back to Marc-Andre Ter Stegen. Here's Koundé. I don't think we're going to see a second here. No second goal? You I, I just don't think they oh, need surely to. that's a foul ref. Sorry, Jamie. Yeah, no. Go on. I, I just... I. I I don't think they need to be pushing on. I don't mm. think they need to be taking any risks. Cadiz have shown they can counter-attack. They can switch it on all of a sudden. They, they reminded us of that some five, ten minutes ago. And I think Barca now will be saying, like, you know what? We can we can hold on a few more minutes and, and just take the win, take the easy three points. Roger, the ex-Levante uh, player. Sorry, did I cut you off? No, no. The ex-Levante uh, player eager to try to get his foot to the ball. I always... Rougier played so many Ooh. seasons with Levante, it was weird to see him uh, with another shirt that is not Levante. In the meantime, Barca pressing forward. Maybe a chance here to... Uh, Make me eat my words. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> the, jinx, wrong, Barca. the jinx. The jinx. <laughs> working his magic. <clears throat> Three minutes remaining. Reminder for all of you watching to uh, stay tuned to this space right here because we've got all of the post-match reactions coming your way. We've got Mark Brau pitch side at the moment and he will talk with the protagonists as they come out of the locker room one by one. We're getting first-hand reactions of the players and the coach Xavi Hernandez as well at the end in the press conference. So again, don't touch that down. Stay tuned to uh, the post-match reactions and the highlights coming your way after this match. But before that, we still have a few more long minutes before the referee will blow the end of this match and uh, call for halftime, uh, for full-time rather. Sobrino in deep discussion with the linesman. What was a foul? A foul here on Marcos Alonso. So guys, I, I will give you, I will give you an option. Yeah, there's a foul, uh, uh, Marcos Alonso was full. If you wanna discuss a, a question to, to ask to a Barca player, it's the moment, guys. So I don't know. You want to say to the fans, or you? You want to do the ask, uh, the question? I I give you the opportunity, guys. Oh. You want to think about it? Wow! Look at that. So for you, the fans. Oh, the, oh, oh, the thing is, uh, oh, yeah, for the fans, yeah. Is they if they want one question, Diego, pick it up. And okay. Maybe in the, in the I like uh, it. Post match, I, I will ask to Xavi or to a player. You've got a chance here, folks. Did you hear that? Mark Brau asking you, the fans, to think of a question that you would like to ask one of the protagonists, one of the Barca players um, following this exciting match, this uh, nail-biter between Cadiz and Barca. La Mar breaking into the penalty area, trying to find Rafinha there at the far post, but unable to connect with the Brazilian forward. So let's hear from the chat. What questions do you have? for our Barca players, what would you guys ask? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about asking one of the players, how different do they feel coming into games now than they did, let's say, January? Does it feel again now that when you go into <laughs> games, you're not going to concede goals, that you are going to win, that you trust each other again? Because that's what it looks like to me right now. When I look at this Barca team playing, and I maybe shouldn't be saying this in the 89th minute at 1-0, <laughs> but <laughs> um, even in the other games like against PSG and whatnot, and, and Atletico Madrid, sort of games that just weren't happening back in, in January. I yeah. know we always ask, what's changed? We ask Xavi, what's changed all the time? Yeah. But one of the mm. players 
Sam what, what, what with has a, changed? How do they feel? With a, with a bit of a but harsh tackle Re there on Pedri, guys, always hold my heart. seconds to play. We have five seconds to play the other time game. The other time, five seconds you have. Very quickly, please. Three minutes. I would say four. I'll go, I think Three. four as well. I think we're in for some more uh, suffering here. Four minutes, if not five. Four, four, four. four. I, okay. I swear I, I didn't see the, the number. So it's four. Four minutes. Four long minutes. These, four are, gonna long, be... these are long yeah. minutes, Jamie, exactly. But uh, sorry, Pablo, I had to cut you off. No, no, yeah. I mean, the point you made, I 100% agree that this, the, this defensive solidity that we grew accustomed to last season is back now, isn't it? We're uh, very close to Barca walking away with another clean sheet, the sixth in a row. And that is something that characterized this team, of course, in particular last season when we were the least the team with the least amount of goals conceded in all top European competitions, mm. let alone uh, the Spanish top flights. And uh, Marco Andre Ter Stegen would surely love to repeat that Zamora trophy, the uh, top goalkeeper trophy of uh, La Liga EA Sports come the end of the season. Back-to-back -back trophies it would be for our hero. An absolute massive save that he had as he stopped uh, Samaseku from scoring a screamer for Cadiz. Also, just got to keep the ball now, really. Yeah, just keep that ball, keep that run, ball. Run the clock down, not, not give Cadiz, you know, a no. set piece, one of those opportunities exactly. to happen. Keep the ball in this area of the field we have it now in Cadiz half. Yes. You know, give options to each other. Oh. Siempre engaña, it always kind of good possession by Barca. Yeah. Cheats the eye, yeah. Good possession. It, I thought that back. the way that we have to play the other time. Yes. Yeah. I thought that pass was nearly going to break the defensive line and reach uh, its intended target in La Mina Mal, but it was intercepted in the end. It was a throw in now for Barca as uh, Pedri's back on the ball. Oh. Lovely little nutmeg there. Can he keep hold, oh. hold of the ball? Yes, he can. Magical number eight. Pedri Brilliant. taken Brilliant. down by force and uh, earning Barca another free kick. I love it. Brilliant Let's take a look at this Pedri. again. Kind of, kind of forget how much we just how much we'd missed Pedri him, right? Pedri Potter like, is back, guys. Harry Pedri Potter, Potter is, back. is back. Yes, indeed. Yeah, you're saying, Jamie, yeah. Like, yeah, you know, we, we missed him. We missed having him on the pitch. We missed what he could do, but you, you just sort of forget just how good it is to watch him, you know? And, and you, that little spark of magic that he brings with him. It's yeah, and, and, and it's literally a spark. I mean, yeah, in the yeah. game against PSG, it's his first touch. Uh, Alley-oop, as I keep calling it, to uh, Rafinha, to use a little bit of basketball terminology, to allow Barca to score the equalizer. Now, it's up to the defense to stay compact and focused here as Cadiz win a corner they've in the final that. minute of they've the game. That. That's they've, a piece you're talking about, they've, they've caught, they've Mark <laughs> Casado. The fans are shouting. The, the fans is shouting Conan going up, yeah. going up is what the fans said to the goalkeeper. Ledesma, you can stay down for us. In comes the cross. It is cleared. Hey. Ooh, Samaseku trying to get a touch to it, and he does, but the referee oh? has stopped the play. Mark, what is uh, the referee called here? Seems the, like a foul yeah, on Pauku Barsi. Drop ball. Because it touched What's the going on? A drop ball for what? Uh, oh, I mean, the, the, the ball touched touch the camera, yeah. yeah. The oh. ball touched the camera. Oh my goodness. The, the ball touched the spider cam. You know, the spider cam. Yes. The things that only so happen the in, the, in Spanish football. The, cam, the possession was for Barca, and people are annoyed okay. here in the stands, but it's a rule. If the possession is by Barca, you can't okay. control it. The ball touched the cam. So right. the spider cam. Hey, the rules are the over. rules. Barca won the game. Yes! It's over, guys. Barca won. 1 0, it finishes between Football Club Barcelona and Cadiz. That man that we are seeing on our screens, Joao Felix, earning Barca not one, not two, but three 
huge points, valuable points to cut the deficit again with the league leaders to eight. Barca walking away from Nuevo Mirandilla with three points after a game where we suffered. We knew we were going to suffer. We had to suffer. We knew it before. We knew that this was going to be a cagey affair. We wanted a good result, and that was the most important thing on the night, the result, and it came. It came in the form of João Félix, and not just any goal, it was a Chilena, a bicycle kick, an absolute beauty of a goal that earns Barça the three massive points, valuable points to, kick, to continue to pick up points and threes, keep up the chase for the league title, and as well, hey, now we can finally say it, walk away with a clean sheet as well, and that is also, of course, of, of, of most importance. Massive, that is. Massive. Your impressions, boys. Some quick uh, first-hand impressions from the panel here. Pablo, go ahead. Yeah, Barca knew they came into this game making a lot of rotations before PSG. They knew it was going to be a tight, a cagey affair. We said it a hundred times, but it really was <laughs> against Cardiff. And there weren't many chances. You say no shots on target for Barca in the second half. Was that sort of game, really? Jao Felix's moment of magic has done it in the end. Uh, for Xavi's side, but he'll be very happy with that, Xavi. He'll be really happy with that because to come mm -hmm. here, not concede. It's a Cadiz who, of course, we know needed to win. They need points. So to be able to fend them off in that way is really positive for Barca. It's an important win, really. Like I said, not only to keep up with Real Madrid in La Liga, but also to go into that game against PSG and then the one against Real Madrid, yes. of course, the next Sunday with some good momentum. I think it was important not to drop points tonight. So really, really happy with that. Of course, not the most incredible game of football, but job done for Barca is really the, the line, I'd say. Jamie, we're going to get your reactions in the post-match uh, game, in the uh, post-match show, I should say. So don't touch that dial. Make sure that you tune in and stay here on Barca One or YouTube to follow all of the post-match reactions coming your way. Mark Brau is going to talk to all of the protagonists, the players, and we're going to hear from the head coach himself as well. Xavi Hernandez will sit in the hot seat following what was a uh, feisty affair over against Gadith. 1-0 it is. Three points are in the bag, and also we managed to cut the distance a little bit further with the third place Girona after they lost against uh, Atletico de Madrid earlier today. Stay with us. We are going to be right back after this short break. See you soon.
Welcome back, Ules. I hope you've wiped the sweat off your foreheads and are now sitting comfortably because, yes, indeed, Barca managed to walk away with the three points. A huge win over in Cadiz against a, a very uh, tough Cadiz side in, in Diz. But in the end, it was Joao Felix that managed to score the one and only goal and earn Barca three massive points. That sets up a beautiful week and ends another terrific week for Barca as well. We want to hear from the protagonists, of course. In fact, we've got the main man already ready with our sideline reporter, Mark Brau. He speaking to Joao Felix. Let's take a listen. He scored the goal tonight in Cádiz, is Joao Félix. Joao, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo estás? Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Bueno, victoria importante, ¿no? Evidentemente todo el mundo hablaba ¿no? de la eliminatoria contra el Paris Saint-Germain, que este partido estaba en medio, pero el equipo se lo ha tomado en serio y habéis sacado otros puntos que os permiten seguir vivos en la Liga. Sí, con la victoria que hemos hecho eh, ahí en París no es fácil eh, volver a concentrar en la Liga, ¿no? Porque hemos hecho un partidazo y pues ahora este era muy importante ganarlo. Subimos, subimos estar enfocados en este partido y ahora sí ya podemos pensar en el partido de, de martes. Joao, no sé si habías marcado algún gol de chilena alguna vez en tu vida. Eh, hace, el año pasado, hace dos años, he eh, marcado aquí también y pues me da suerte este campo. No sé cuál ha sido la clave del partido, había muchos cambios en el 11 pero da la sensación, Joao, que estáis en un momento de la temporada que cualquier jugador que entra en la plantilla, cualquier jugador que entra desde el banquillo es capaz de aportar. Vais todas a una y la sensación es que estáis todos muy bien. Sí, todos intentamos hacer el mejor, empezando a titular o no, y pues obviamente cuando empezamos a titular tenemos más tiempo para demostrar, ¿no? Y intento hacer siempre mi mejor para ayudar al equipo, para estar a mejor nivel, eh, para cuando llegue mi oportunidad estar ahí y, y hacerlo bien. Y te hago la última, Joao, aunque seguramente mucha gente está pendiente del próximo partido contra el Paris Saint Germain, el mensaje hoy del equipo es claro, ¿no? A pesar de la victoria del Madrid, hay un clásico la semana que viene y todavía hay que seguir creyendo en la Liga. Sí, obviamente. Vamos a creer hasta el final, hasta que podamos, hasta que máticamente sea posible. Vamos a estar ahí a creen, creyendo y peleando por, por el título. Gracias, Joao. Enhorabuena. Gracias. The words of Joao Félix explain in Spanish that he scored a bicycle kick goal in this stadium with Atletico de Madrid. I don't remember this, maybe Pablo remembers this, but he scored a goal quite similar like today he scored Joao Felix, who said that the team was focused on tonight's game, that it was not easy because uh, due to the incredible game played against Paris Saint-Germain, all the focus can be to the next game against uh, Paris Saint-Germain, but the team was focused on winning today. Uh, they know that it's uh, difficult. Uh, he also talks about uh, the way that uh, it doesn't matter if he comes from the bench or is playing for the beginning of the match. He's focused, of course, to do a great uh, performance. And in the last question, he said that we have to believe. Of course, it's difficult. We have a classic on next Sunday. There's a huge difference in the standings. But team is believing in the league. But next step has to be the champions. Excellent stuff, Mark. Uh, <laughs> great to hear from both Joao Felix and you as well. I was just saying that uh, I'm surprised that you didn't remember that Joao Felix scored a bicycle kick there uh, against Cadiz in their stadium. I'm going to put Pablo on the spot here. Did you remember? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> I remember, I'm like, I'm like, I'm the, the, like a mini Maric Brown, like I remember Barca, but uh -huh. like Atleti a little less. Yes. Why do I feel like I remember him scoring a lot of goals in this stadium though? I will say that, but the bicycle kick, I don't have it like right there in my head. Sorry. Jamie, did you remember? I was gonna say that Pablo was just telling me about how that happened. <laughs> no, no, not a clue. Well, it no, was it? Um, but it was brilliant tonight. <laughs> like that one I'm gonna remember, so. We are going to remember that and uh, we are, of course, uh, going to remember this game, perhaps not so much for the style of play, but in the manner in which the three points have been uh, brought home. That was the important thing tonight, wouldn't you say, Jamie? It was all about getting the good results, finishing this week on a high after the first leg of the Champions League quarterfinals. 3-2 over in Paris, now 1-0 over in a very tough stadium uh, for Barca in this past few seasons indeed. Walk away with a good result to set up uh, an interesting week that is coming up. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think they could have asked for much more, to be honest. You know, they, they heavy rotations, eight changes, yes. I think Mark said to the starting exactly. eleven, which like, and, and players that maybe haven't played together before because we've had like players that have just come up from the youth sections, players returning from injury, and, and seeing them kind of gel. And it, I thought the question that Mark asked uh, um, Jao then was was quite interesting because it does almost seem like Xavi's got a point now where 
he could play any kind of 11, and all the players deserve to be starting or deserve the minutes and could come on and hold their own. And, and I think, you know, it was good to see that, prove that point today. And it's an important one because they've got a crazy month ahead. We talk a lot about this week, about PSG and Real Madrid, but, but, but the month of May, like, it's just games, games, right. games. And, you know, if, if it all goes well this week against PSG, then mm. it's an even heavier schedule. Absolutely. So I think, I think it's a really important night for Xavi, for Barca, for perhaps some of the players that haven't had as many minutes to have been able to go out there and, and held their own in what you say, like, you know, it's, it was a hostile stadium tonight. We saw yeah. the, the, the atmosphere, we saw that we heard the fans, we heard the loudspeaker that they didn't <laughs> set up behind <laughs> Ter Stegen's goal and, and Barca went and took away the three points. Well, let's now hear from more protagonists. Let's hear from Marcos Alonso, who's standing next to Mark Brau. After five months, he's returning to the team. We are with our left back, Marcos Alonso. Marcos, ¿qué tal? Buenas noches. Hola, ¿qué tal? Buenas noches. Bueno, ahora lo decía en inglés. Cinco meses después has, has vuelto a, a jugar un partido. Me imagino que no ha sido un camino fácil, pero, pero bueno, has jugado, lo has hecho a buen nivel, has ayudado al equipo. ¿Cómo te has sentido? Sí, la verdad que ha sido eh, cinco meses largos, ¿no? Eh, sin, sin poder ayudar al equipo. Eh, luchando para, para estar cuanto antes, pero, pero bueno, muy contento de, de poder haber estado aquí hoy, haber ayudado al equipo y, y bueno, tres puntos y portería cero para el, el primer día, contento y, y nada, a seguir de aquí hasta el final. No era fácil, me imagino, y para el equipo el partido, ¿no? Porque después de la victoria del Madrid, eh, supongo que os habéis enterado antes de empezar a jugar, en medio de la eliminatoria contra el Paris Saint-Germain, o sea, tiene que sufrir un poco, ¿no? Pero lo importante era mantener esta buena dinámica y otra portería cero. Sí, sí, sí. Además con un equipo que, que se está jugando la vida, ¿no? Sabíamos que, que no iba a ser fácil, pero bueno, hemos sabido sufrir. Creo que, que nos ha faltado a lo mejor eh, un poco más de, de claridad arriba para, para haber acabado con el partido y, y, y no haber sufrido al final. Pero bueno, eh, como te digo, contento con el, con el resultado, con la portería cero, que creo que es lo que estaba faltando un poco al principio de temporada comparado con, con el año pasado. Y bueno, a seguir en, en esta línea y a descansar, a preparar el partido el martes. ¿Qué te pareció el gol de Joao? Bien, la verdad que no lo he visto muy bien porque me tapaba un poco toda la gente, ¿no? Pero, pero muy contento, muy contento de, por, por Joao y, y, y bueno, un gol importante que nos ha dado los tres puntos. I will ask you the last question in English, Marcos. You said that you suffered a little bit after five months you're playing now. Uh, you can explain what are your feelings and, and your goals in the final of the, of the season if you, you can feel important for the, for the team in the last games. Yeah, 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 of course. My, my aim was to, to be ready for when the manager needs me and, and we're glad to to have been able today to play 90 minutes in, in good form and I think from here I, I can only uh, keep building on, on shape and, and, and hopefully have a, a, a few performances before the end of the season to, to help the team and, and achieve the goals. Thank you, Marcos. Thank you. Gracias. Marcos Alonso, and we cannot change because we have another player here, Fermin. Fermin is listening to me talking in English, but don't worry, I will ask you in, in Spanish. Fermín, ¿cómo estás? Buenas noches. Hola, ¿qué tal? Buenas noches. Bueno, buena victoria, ¿no? Ha tocado sufrir un poquito, ¿no? Había quien podía pensar el Cádiz, está en la parte baja, pero en medio de la eliminatoria contra el Paris Saint-Germain no era un partido fácil. Bueno, sabemos que era un partido difícil porque ellos están jugando el descenso y es un rival siempre complicado. Y bueno, veníamos de Champions, que también venir con una victoria así, pues un poco engañoso, te puedes relajar y bueno, yo creo que hemos estado bien desde un principio y, y bueno, la verdad que es una gran victoria del equipo. Contar una entrevista en catalán, Fermín. Uh, no sé qué ha estado el mes importante hoy, si la mentalidad como hemos afrontado el partido o cómo de vez teu tots, para que es verdad que ha dado la sensación que entre y entre desde la banqueta, fin yo todos que los últimos partidos no han estado titulares, doneu, doneu tot y ayudeu a la equipo. Bueno, creo que las dos cosas, yo creo que cual sabor que, que entre al camp dona la seva millor versió y eso es muy importante para la equipo y nada, estamos muy contentos para, para que esta racha y tenim que que sigui así fins al final. ¿Y habías visto al Joe Félix marcar algún gol así al entrenamiento de Chilena? Sí, sí, algunos sí. Alguno, sí. Sabemos de la calidad que tiene Joao y, y bueno, la verdad que gracias a ese golazo pues, hemos podido conseguir la victoria. Y la última pregunta, Fermín. La Liga está difícil porque el Madrid está muy puntos la semana que viene ningún clase. Llevas un partido contra el Paris Saint-Germain. Fa un año estabas jugando al Linares y ahora tienes esta, esta semana para davant. ¿Cómo la viu un jugador que senta en el Barça como tú, con la ilusión? Uh, supongo que encara estás pensando en el partido de hoy, pero ¿cómo vius esta semana? ¿Cuándo hi pensis? Clásico y PSG. Bueno, mucha ilusión, era inimaginable, ¿no? L'any passat he pasado eh, moments dolents y bueno, creo que, que la force ha... Uh, uh, 
ha valido la pena y, y bueno, creo que estoy muy contento para la familia, para mí y nada, muy contento de jugar a estos partidos que son un somni para mí y espero en guaña. Sabo que sí, Fermín, muchas gracias. Gracias. <laughs> Fermin saying, uh, well, he speaks in Spanish, he speaks in, in Catalan. So uh, I will try to translate a little bit uh, the words of, of Marcos Alonso, the first uh, questions, what I said to him. He explained in English it was a little bit difficult to play after five months of injury, and uh, he tried to to help the team and, and the way he's, uh, he's playing today. Uh, he said, of course, that uh, the team is focused uh, on the league, that we have to keep working on it, the same words as Joe Felix uh, said. And after all, Fermin said in the last uh, interview, uh, the last question, I, I want to explain the feeling, uh, how emotion was uh, Fermin to explain the week that he has next one. Uh, Linares was playing in the third division of Spain last season, and next week for Fermin uh, can be uh, playing um, Champions League game against Paris Saint-Germain and the Clásico against Real Madrid. So he explained to us that he's a little bit nervous, but maybe he's so illusioned and so emotional for the, what happened uh, next week. Also, Fermin explained in, in Catalan and in, in Spanish that it's, uh, it's difficult to play today, that they suffer more than uh, they expected. But uh, the most important is to keep uh, to another clean sheet, six clean sheets in a row, another win, 13 uh, games without losing, Barca equalizing the best strike of the season, and those are the words of Fermín López and Marcos Alonso. So the, I think the most important the message for them is that the team is one. Barca won, the team is one. Well said, Mark. Uh, thank you for those uh, always fascinating uh, what do you call the flash or how do you call it in English flash interviews uh, is that how you say it in English as well these flash shows post match yeah. post match yeah. interviews yeah. keep it simple I've been, of, here, so uh, Marco long, like you, I've been here for too long like now we just like, used to call them like the flash interviews flash so interviews yeah uh, Marcos Alonso and Fermin Lopez both had uh, a lot to say interesting to, uh, stuff to hear both from the seasoned uh, defender as well as the young midfielder I wanted to ask you Pablo mm. uh, in the case of uh, Marcos Alonso Mark at, asked him you know being back after five months out in it with the team surrounded with by players who are not used to playing 11 this was an 11 a starting 11 that of course hasn't been uh, repeated this season uh, in the case as well of Fermin Lopez Mark mentioned you played in Linares last season now you're playing with the Barca first team against teams like PSG you've got the Clásico coming up uh, Real Madrid and now against a very sturdy serious Cadiz side as well making your presence felt how much credit do you give to Xavi and the squad to in this final this recta final this crunch time of the season to be able to show so much character yeah It's massively important. And I give a lot of credit to Xavi and the players because we were probably at a stage in the season in January where we were thinking, what have we got to play for? And everyone's sort of just united together. Players seem happy, you know, like players like Joel Felix who maybe will feel that hard done by by minutes at times this season to come together, fight for the team, dig in in games like these that weren't pretty games, that weren't the like, pleasant ones to play. And they he wanted to be playing, you know, midweek against PSG, Joel Felix from the start. But he did his job really well tonight and took the game with a scruff of the neck. Players like Marcos Alonso, who's a great professional, by the way. Uh, it's been a shame that he's been out injured all season, but he's yeah. actually, I thought, one of like, the fittest players in Europe in terms of playing minute after minute after minute when I used to see him at Chelsea in the Premier League and whatnot. And to have him out this season is actually quite unlike him because he's a very fit player and often you know, isn't out with injury. And he really can play 90 after 90 after 90. Did it again today, playing 90 minutes straight up from injury. And that's the sort of player he is, to be fair to Alonso. Very professional, and I'm sure he'll be a pleasure to have for Xavi in the dressing room too. And Fermin's a great story. He's a great story playing it's last wonderful. season in Linares Deportivo. A lot of us Barca fans probably like rightly thought like, you know, where's this guy come yeah. from? Obviously the class, the goal in the classic on pre-season sort of like, even when he came off the bench that game, I thought like, what, what's Chubby doing here? Like, who is this? Like, there were some other guys who maybe you thought would come, on up, uh, come up before Fermin. What a player he's been this season. Massive in midfield for Barca. Scores goals from midfield too and sets the tone in games up tonight. So that's great. But the whole squad is in, is in good form at the moment. We're in a good moment, I feel, going into the most important week of the season. And if all goes well, it's going to be a very exciting end to the season. So Barca have got to focus now. They've got a massive game on Tuesday night. So, you know, I'm sure we'll talk plenty about that. You, what is it? Is this, 
Is there something? Oh, it's a friendly on Tuesday night. <laughs> yeah, on Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday's a warm up for Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, I wanted to ask you as well. I mean, uh, you, of course, covered the youth team, hmm. uh, the Barca youth ranks uh, during your time here at uh, Barca Studios. Many games that you covered where you saw a lot of these youngsters. You talked about uh, Hector Ford, Pau Cubarsi. Uh, how surprised? I mean, are you surprised to see these youngsters fit, uh, be Let's be honest, a seamless fit to this first first team and play at such a high level? Um, I think there's two questions. Here. Like, I think in terms of like how they fit, hmm. that's probably not surprising. Because actually the sort of the way Barca play, the way they train, the way they work is very consistent, right? Even from like uh, 12 years old, you know, all the way up. They they move the ball around, they work out from the back, uh, they have the, the tiki taka, the high press. Like it's a very consistent way of working it, the, the, and the ones that have come up through that process, it, they, they live and breathe and bleed it. The flip side of that is when you look at actually how many go into the Masia and how many end up on here on a European stage. Mm -hmm. And could they be more possibly, but actually the percentage is quite low. They often end up elsewhere playing very well at a very high level. But the ones that get through and they have that spark of magic and they, they have the ability to change games, they come out and they do it. And they do it week in, week out. And I think that is something that is credit to La Masia and credit to the sort of coaches like Xavi that spot it and put them on in, and let them play in a way that they can play. Yeah. And they, they can uh, shine brightly there on the pitch. And I think that's, yeah, that's, that's credit to that whole setup and the way that the coaches work amongst each other as well. Jamie, if my count is not failing me, I believe that 15 La Masia players have made their start with the uh, Barca first squad under Xavi Hernandez and what is still to come as well. I mean, uh, at the top of my mind, the name that comes to mind is uh, Angel Alarcón, who mm. is still suffering from injuries, had a string of a serious injury that has kept him sidelined, unfortunately, for far too long. But that's another very bright young player that we've seen uh, but the, but there are play. Very yeah, and there are amazing players that come through. And, and like I, I sort of going back to what I was saying, just because they don't get to the Barca first team regularly doesn't mean they're bad by any stretch. Like, mm. there are some brilliant, brilliant players that come through. Um, and, and, you know, that's, that's like one case that I, I would love to see him play more because we saw him do some amazing yeah. things alongside the likes of Lamine, Jamal, exactly. and Mark Guillaume, you know? And, yes. and we, we talked about those players for, like, the UEFA uh, Youth League, for when they were playing for Barca B or the under 19s. or And, and to be able to see them come and, and get this opportunity in the world stage and see them bring that same brilliance, yeah. I think is, is really great. Absolutely. Well, we're just uh, waiting here to see from, uh, hear from more reactions rather from the players as they are uh, leaving the locker room. We're waiting as well for Xavi Hernandez to, of course, take to the hot seat, Pablo. At mm -hmm. this point in time, now that the three points in, are in the bag, the win against Cadiz, we can expect a lot of the questions aimed at Xavi to, of course, start looking forward now, yes, and entertain PSG as well as the Clásico. Oh, we're going to hear more about PSG yeah. than Caddy, aren't we, really? <laughs> right, um, yeah. But that is, that's the nature of the week. Yeah. yeah, that's the nature of the week. And all the Barca fans were even coming into tonight's game thinking, PSG, 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 <laughs> that Real Madrid. Yeah. But the focus, to be fair to the players, yeah. looked like it was on Caddy, and I want to give them a lot of credit for that. This was a sort of game that was easy to drop points in. A mm. lot of changes, Cadiz playing for their life, big atmosphere, everyone's thinking about these other two games. La Liga, with Real Madrid beating Mallorca earlier, is very, it was quite far away. You know, we've, we've reduced the deficit now and nicely, and of course we've got the, cl the Clásico coming up. It was one of those easy games where you're thinking, Barca might drop off here. And they did really well to keep their heads, keep focused. I think that will really please Xavi, because it tells him that this team has got the right mindset to go into this stage of the season. And that's what Barca need right now. They really need it. And the team looks united. They're not conceding goals, which I said the whole way through this campaign is how you can get far in the Champions League. If you're leaking goals, you're not going to get very far. Barca yep. need to keep it tight at the back against the likes of Mbappe and PSG. It's more difficult, of course it is. But they have to keep that going, of course. In La Liga, it's got a lot better. Let's hope it continues into the Champions League. But that's good. That's good news for Barca. Absolutely, that's good news and, for Xavi. And listen, despite conceding uh, those uh, uh, two goals in the Parc des Princes, uh, the defenders absolutely manhandled uh, the PSG forwards. One man in particular, I'm not going to say any names, I don't want to jinx nothing, but we all know that uh, our defenders got the upper hand in that first round against PSG. Of course, there's still a second round to play. Before we hear from more of the players and Xavi, why don't we see what uh, our panel 
and Mark Brau chose as well in terms of the MVP of today's match. And I want to hear from you, the fans as well. Of course, light up the comment section with your three points. Who are you going to give it to? Two points uh, and the final one point of honor. Who are you going to award it to? Is it going to be Mark andre Ter Stegen? Will it be the uh, uh, goal scorers. In fact, before we get to the man of the match, we have got the highlights for you as well. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at the highlights first of this very intense m intense match uh, that took place at uh, the Nuevo Mirandilla. It was match day 31. Barça traveling down south to a Cadiz that was packed. It was a, a packed house indeed. All tickets sold out in what was a festive atmosphere ahead of the game and it got feisty indeed. Yeah, we had to wait for the first chance to be created uh, deep into the first half. Around the uh, 25th minute mark it was Fermin Lopez with a warning shot and then came the goal at uh, the Late again, nearing the end of the first half, it was Joao Felix with an acrobatic bicycle kick to stun Ledesma, who had done uh, well up until that point to keep the goal clear of any goals uh, conceded. You see there, Isaac, I think it is, that uh, went down trying to claim a foul, making an absolute meal of it, and the referee was having none of it. Instead, the goal rightfully awarded, of course, to Joao Felix. Take a look at this. How often do we see a bicycle kick being scored? I'll wait for Pablo to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and while he thinks of it, it was also then here. Very close indeed. It was Fermin Lopez ever so close to scoring the second goal for Barca. This one, though, being cleared off the goal line. Felt like that was maybe Choose. the moment that Barca could have run away with the game, yeah. didn't yeah. it? At 2-0, yeah. that, that probably would have been that. Obviously, things became more cagey in the second half and Xavi was forced to, to go to his bench. Three substitutions. Ferran Torres giving Joao Felix this lovely assist in the Portuguese forward, taking in a stride, the one touch, nearly getting it on target. And then it was La Minha Mal. This one, I thought that just, he just miskicked it, but it was actually a good save uh, mm. by the Cadiz goalkeeper to send it out for a throw-in for Barca. In the 72nd minute, this happened. Bang! On the post. It was uh, flagged for offside as uh, the number 14 took that ball in an offside position. You yeah. see it there. We spoke about Jar Fedex. I, I do feel like he took the game by the scruff of the neck. And I know it was offside there, but he could have got clear just beforehand. But he was really Barca's bright spark, I thought, today. God, he's had their moments, though. The Barca defenders had to stay wary as uh, they had some very good minutes. This one, though, oh my. Marc-Andre Ter Stegen. What does Robert always say? Ter Stegen Airlines, I believe. Ter Stegen Airlines. Ter Stegen yeah. Airlines coming in it action really was that. with a, an absolute uh, a goal saver there. Joao Felix scoring the goal. The 1 0, it ended, and Barca back in the three points. And. Uh, Three points uh, taste very good indeed. Now then, should we go to the man of the match? See who uh, got the three points awarded. Um, the man of the match, is it around that time? Going to be a tight okay, one. Okay, well then uh, <laughs> let's see the final scores or let's see what uh, Jamie, Pablo, Mark and myself awarded. Again, uh, also a reminder for you fans to uh, share your thoughts in the comments section. Do you agree with what our panel have chosen or not? Are we going to see it on our screens, the man of the match? Exciting, because I think there's a few options here. <laughs> the tension I think, here. I think, the I, think, I, think, I think there's a few options. I think we might all, all have a few. Hmm. Here we go here then, we go. starting with Jamie. Jamie. Um, man of the match for me, I, I was torn between the top two there. Um, and in the end, I think Ter Stegen, it could have been a different outcome. There was a couple of times when he made key saves. That one that we saw just now in the highlights was uh, the, the clearest of examples. And uh, I think if it weren't for him, it could have been a different story. Uh, and so I, I, he edged it for me in terms of uh, man of the match. Joe Felix, for very obvious reasons, uh, he did get that goal. And what a goal it was. And he, he could have got more goals, I think, yes. uh, had Fortune been slightly more on his side. 
And then I just think Fermin in that kind of, yeah. particularly in that first half, he really drove a lot of that that momentum and, and forward movement that led Barca to that goal. So uh, yeah, for me, he was the, the one of the key players. As well. Fine choices indeed, Mr. Coles. Hard Thank you very to much, disagree. Sir. Unless your name is Pablo, you are disagreeing. <laughs> Three points to Pau Cubarsi. I've gone for Kubar C, which is a bit maybe like a rogue one because he didn't make the big save or he didn't make the goal like Jao Felix did, but I thought he was absolutely superb. I thought he kept Cadiz at bay all night long and just cut everything out, also in building the ball from the back for Barcelona. I know we could almost say every week with him, or every three days in this case, but I just thought he was absolutely sublime and just was like head and shoulders above everyone at uh, in the defence, and I thought Cadiz forwards just didn't have a sniff with him back there. What a performance from Kubar C, so I've gone for him. I've gone for Jao Felix, number two. I'm gutted to leave Fermin out of my list, to be fair. I think it's very, very harsh. But I've gone for Jao Felix because I've said it all night long. This game needs a moment of magic. It needs someone to take it by the scruff of the neck. I thought he did that. And then I'm going to go for Tostegan because Jamie like, rightly pointed out that yeah. save changed the game. Yes. You know, another goalkeeper and that just flies to the corner and it's one all here. Yeah. Or who knows what happens in the last 10 minutes if that one mm -hmm. goes in. So I've gone for him because, you know, you've sort of had Jao Felix at one end, Tostegan at the other. So I've, so I've gone for those two. So I think that's fair. But Kubarsi for me was just absolutely immense at the back yeah 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 all right interesting well uh uh who is next is it myself or should we uh, take a look at mark I'll, uh, all right the judges Ooh. decided it's me yes i've awarded uh, the three points for joao felix i felt that besides that beautiful bicycle kick i mean the bicycle kick in and of itself is worthy uh, for the three points the three points that barca also take home with them that allow them to uh, keep their hopes alive of making this title race interesting come next week so and he could have scored more as you guys have point rightly pointed out as well so joao felix for me deserve it of the three points ter stegen airlines <laughs> goal saving i mean he didn't have to make many drastic saves but Mark andre Ter Stegen, as always, showing that he is uh, the best goalkeeper in the world and uh, making goal-stopping saves as well that really, quite frankly, also, uh, of course, allow Barca to walk away with the three points. And finally, uh, Fermin Lopez, the Energizer Bunny. He just, you know, you could sense that he was playing with a purpose. I don't know if it was the fact that he was in Andal Andalusia, his, his, his native uh, home ground, of course. Um, and, 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 and I felt that he had something special this game and I'm going to give him that point of honor. But um, hard to disagree as well, though, with all of your choices mm. and, and, and Pau Cubarsi. I mean, the whole team really worked their socks off in this match. It was a match where, bueno, hemos tenido que sufrir. We had to suffer, but we walk away with the points. Let's see what Mark uh, awarded for the match. Joao Felix, the three points for Mark, um, and we have him here, the man with us. Mark, you want to uh, tell <laughs> us your scores? Yeah, we are waiting for Xavi to, to talk in our microphones. Uh, let's see if we can follow the Xavi reaction there or in the press conference room. Uh, yeah, absolutely everything you said, all the reasons that you said for Joe Felix is also the the, the reasons because I, I give him the, the three points. He was also the MVP uh, given by La Liga. He scored the winning goal, incredible bicycle kick goal for uh, Joe Felix and uh, he deserves a lot these three points. I will give you two points to Fermin because I think he keep uh, the rhythm alive in uh, the ways of the of the match that wasn't the best way for Barca so I, I think that he deserves also to make the two points he was very close to score the second goal in the first half on the end of the center of the first half and I will give you one point to Mark and Richard Stegen to Terra Stegen our lines just to uh, save this one all right Mark and I mean again this sets up a very interesting week, of course. We've got PSG and El Clasico. How many questions do you think that uh, in the press conference will be, oh, we've lost Mark. <laughs> unfortunate, unfortunate. I think we're seeing uh, some movement in the press conference. So Mark mm. is uh, taking, assuming his position, getting ready to ask uh, some questions to Xavi Hernandez while we await for the head coach to appear in front of the press. The final result, player of the match with 10 points is Joao Felix. No massive surprise here, I think. I think we could all uh, agree that uh, the Portuguese forward is the worthy man of the match, having scored that beautiful goal that, uh, of course, means the three points. Marc-André Ter Stegen sitting pretty in second with uh, lucky number seven, having that massive save, I mean, right on the goal line after a beautiful kick from outside of the uh, box. And Fermin 
with four, Pau Cubarsi with three. Let's uh, head over back to Mark. Mark, are you with us? Yeah, I'm here with us. Just to say that we will not hear Xavi in our microphone because Xavi has to go quickly to the press conference room. We didn't listen to him in these microphones in Barcelona, 1, but we will listen to him in the press conference room because I have to take all my bags and we have to go straight to Sevilla if we want to arrive this night to Barcelona. So goodbye, guys. Listen to Xavi in the press conference room and another win next Tuesday. Focus, focus, guys, focus. Excellent stuff, excellent stuff. Thank you so much, Mark. And uh, excellent work, as always, from the sidelines. I'm happy that you managed to survive all of the loud sound set up in the stadium to make it to just make it as uncomfortable as they possibly could for Football Club Barcelona. In the end, Barca walking away with the three points. So again, thank you, Mark, for your great work. We can't wait to uh, welcome you back here. On that note, Xavi Hernández is sitting in the hot seats. We bid you farewell. Make sure that you stay uh, tuned to this space to hear from the head coach and, of course, watch all of the Barça lives coming to you as of Monday. Thank you and goodbye. Bona nit, Xavi. Sisè partit de Lliga consecutiu sense rebre gol. Sixth game without conceding. Avui era un diferent, moltes oportunitats per Cádiz. It's been a different start. urgències. Cádiz had uh, several urgencies. I no és d'avui. It's not only today. What do you think you improved so the team doesn't break? Molt menys que en una altra fase de temporada. Sí, jo crec que el joc posicional... Penso que estem molt ben col·locats, molt ben col·locats. I think we are very well placed on the pitch. We can make good pressure. Estem molt bé les pràcticament no en generen contres. We don't receive any counter-attacks at all, and uh, we were in command all game round. We marked man-to-man, -man. we found Fermin, Joao as well. I think we deserve more goals. We played a very good game. We're in a very good form at the moment. In three months, we haven't lost a single game. And, uh, we're in a very good form at the moment. And it's very important for us. Hola, Xavi, Marta Ramon, en directe al Barça Jugar Racú. Volia que em valoressis l'aportació de Pedri. Com veus la seva evolució física? How do you see him? Pensant en el que has vist avui, sinó també pensant en el que hi ha dimarts. I que guanyeu i que parleu utilitzant-lo a la base de la jugada. Bé, al final, Pedri, doncs, aquesta pressió rere pèrdua que el Cádiz amb Pellegrino fa molt bé. I think Cádiz put Barcelona under a lot of pressure. Té la sensació que amb un gir amb una paret, amb un control orientat... They do very well on the counter. Ja he dit moltes vegades, Pedri és un jugador superior. I think Pedri is outstanding. We missed him a lot in the last month. És un jugador diferent. He's a different player. Fàcilment perd la pilota, fàcilment troba la millor opció. We can find him easily. He's got several options. Xavi, bona nit. How important was to have all players engaged? You've made eight changes in the lineup. It was important to be focused. But well, it's a league at stake. We want to compete for the league as well. Next game is in Madrid. And we want to approach them. We play in catch-up and we want to win there. And the players are committed. They are professionals. In the last months, we've been really well. Every single player today, they haven't played much in the last months, and they did very well today. I'm proud of the team. Hola, Xavi. Elena Condis, de la cadena COPE. De los titulares habituales, o los que jugaron en París, el único, de los únicos que no han descansado, Pau Cubarsí is the only player that didn't give you, you didn't give rest. He's got less fatigue, hasn't played that much during the season. But he's uh, going to be an outstanding player. He'll make history in the club. And he always chooses the best option. 
He does everything fine. It doesn't look like he's 17. You've been 13 games where you haven't lost a single game. You've been giving rest to players. Do you think it's the best moment to face this final part of the season? Yeah, especially on Tuesday. Tuesday is a massive game, but we've got one more goal, but uh, yeah, we're going to have a massive team in front. We need the supporters, we need the stadium, a full house, we want them to enjoy, we win our best. Hola, Xavi, ¿qué tal? Hola. Uh, Raúl Fuentes a Radio Marca en directa. Felicidades por la victoria. Gracias. Al hilo del partido del martes, mm, quería preguntarte, no sé si tienes decidido ya el 11. Have you got the starting 11 decided? De hoy, esta victoria, ¿te crea alguna duda de, de meter algún jugador? Is there going to be any doubt concerning? No, 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 I haven't, I haven't decided yet. We've got two more training sessions. Ahora saborear este, que son tres puntos. Now we're going to enjoy this one. La lucha por la liga y... Y lo vamos a preparar ya para el mañana. And we'll be preparing tomorrow. Poco tiempo, pero pienso que... We don't have much time, but... Uh, suficiente para... Preparar. Is enough. Gracias, buenas noches. Buenas noches.